All righty. So what is up, everybody? It is once again time for my internet to be shit. And I do believe that this might be a running trend. So I'm running an experiment right now to see if my hotspot is good enough to allow me to stream because the actual Wi-Fi that I have is extremely unreliable. But today I've actually formulated a list, a guideline, an outline, however you want to put it, that will detail what I really want to go into today without needing too much visual aid. So it is going to be a much more of me just talking to the camera because I cannot manage to, to share screens without my internet or rather my stream absolutely failing. Therefore, the sort of thematics I have planned right now, it's much more candid, much more man to man. And I think that for this, at least it's more appropriate because this has to do with something that I've had to personally endure experience and grow from ever since I was a child, basically. This is something we've all had to deal with. It isn't uh, a unique human experience to go through the character growth and development that is necessary to form boundaries, attain self-respect, attain self-love, and in general, understand what your goals in life are, what your purpose is, what drives you, what you're passionate about, and being unapologetic about approaching and seeking those targets, those aims, those aspirations that you formulated throughout your life. So I've taken it upon myself to create 11 laws of simping. And as discord, which my discord shockingly is somewhat active as zero zero one said, uh, if my internet ever goes out, I'll probably grow as a person, but he also said the whole list that I'm about to say could be summarized by just one sentence, have some self-respect. And while I do think that is absolutely the case and that self-respect ultimately is the bedrock upon which you build yourself as a man and as a person in general, as it's not quite a gender thing to have self-respect, I do think that in terms of being masculine and having a masculine frame, self-respect is the prerequisite to masculinity because we could argue all day about what is masculinity, what makes a man masculine. I think self-respect is the bedrock for that. And that applies to every single culture. I've had debate after debate out of, you know, what, what mix of traits makes a man masculine or versus feminine, what sorts of things can cause somebody to be perceived as feminine or as effeminate rather than, you know, a lack of masculinity rather than a excess of femininity. And I believe that this ultimately does come down to self-respect and how much you as a person reflect your own biases, your own ego, your own self-interest onto yourself first before expressing that to the world. So that's why the first law of simping out of these 11 laws that I'm going to create is simp for yourself first. So what does that mean? And I'm just going to be posting these numerically in the chat. So the first one, just in case people later on decide to drop by the very first law that we have going on for us right now is Sim for yourself first. So what you want to do is you want to be able to understand exactly what makes you tick. And the speaker is like simultaneously both too loud and too quiet. And it's copyrighted music, but I'm sure it'll be fine. But the first law of simping is sim for yourself first. So as you can read, invest your time, energy, and resource into your own life before doing so for anyone else. And so what does this actually mean? I'm going to be turning this off, by the way. Sorry about the, the folks who want the ambience. It's working up on me. But it just means be your own investor. Be your own key patron. Invest your time, energy, and resources in your own life before you're doing so for anyone else. And that basically just boils down to understand your own worth, too. Don't be the kind of guy who's out here buying meals for girls who aren't your wife, who aren't your girlfriend, who aren't even a person of interest. You know, stop blowing your money in the club. Stop blowing your money in useless endeavors. Stop trying to scratch lottery tickets hoping you'll make it. Stop buying up a bunch of drugs and buying up a bunch of random useless crap like figurines and collectibles and start 
doing shit for yourself. And, you know, that doesn't mean don't have any hobbies. It doesn't mean don't collect anything. It doesn't mean don't make purchases for yourself. If anything, it means the opposite. If you're going to invest that time, energy, and resources, you might as well do it for yourself first. But it, the investment of time, energy, and resources into your own life should be a positive. It should be to develop yourself. Things like going to the gym or running or doing a sport or embracing a hobby. If that hobby is collection and that hobby helps keep you level, then that is an investment of your energy and resources to something positive. If it's positive for your mental health or for your well-being, helps you get through the day, helps you avoid burnout, then it, it, it is a, an effective strategy. This is also something I bring up when people talk about, let's say, masturbation or pornography, because there's many people who are no fab, like it's no fab November, and many people believe that pornography in all of its forms is horrible, and you can agree or disagree. But the main discussion is around, of course, the, the whole thing with masturbation or whatever is, is masturbation positive or negative? And I have to point out that psychologically speaking, anything that helps you stay grounded, anything that helps you pre prevent or stave off erratic behavior or impulsive behavior is something that is inherently positive. Do all men need to, you know, beat their meat, buck the slobbering donkey? No, no. But what it is, is an, it's an investment of time, energy and resources both biological and temporal that allows somebody to stay level. So on one hand, this can take multiple forms, but one thing that isn't conducive is spending that time, energy and resource on someone else. Cause how are you supposed to balance yourself? Is this really helping you in any way, shape or form as a, as a person, you know, some people get a kick out of altruism. There is a dopamine rush to being altruistic. But if this was the case and people did feel satisfied and leveled out, then why is there so much frustration around things such as the friend zone? Why is there so much malice between men and women who are in the dating game? If this is all some sort of catharsis to go out and spend money on a meal or to buy people drinks in the club, then wouldn't there be some sort of therapeutic outlet when it comes to doing that, it's not like doing charity work or volunteering for the homeless or going to an animal shelter and helping out. It's something where most people agree is a slog. It's exhausting. It's a, uh, an expensive endeavor to go and try and date and it's emotionally taxing and you will have to make yourself vulnerable. Everybody talks about dating as if it's like a job application or job hunting and not so much like a therapeutic session where you get to release all of your energies and anxieties. So what is it then? If we're going to sit here and talk about, okay, buying people meals and co like copying this for them and showering them with that, we have to understand that most men that are doing this, even the, the people who are willingly engaging in it, aren't getting anything out of it. I think that's inherently the necessary condition for this to be a thing. You can't be altruistic if you're gaining something that, that defeats the whole point of altruism. So if you are arguing from a place of altruism, then you're also agreeing to, or at least admitting that you aren't working from a place of altruism, that you are inherently doing that. You are inherently doing this for some sort of benefit. If you don't agree with the altruistic principle. So what the, what is the benefit of being in the friend zone or being orbited? If your intentions are to date somebody, which most of the time, this is the case for simps, they're never in a platonic relationship with a woman because they want to be. Very few men are like that. In fact, the only men that seem to willingly engage in platonic relationships with women are either men that are uh, somehow connect in a platonic way to a woman who isn't interested, such as like a childhood friend or between parties that are of incompatible sexual orientation, such as one party being gay or lesbian and the other party being straight or something like that. So... That, that's where this works out. But platonic relationships between adults is typically impossible. And the reason I say that is because actual genuine friendship where you invest time, energy and resources and put your life on the line, all of this for other people only really applies to family once you become grown. Because when you're a kid, friendship is just a matter of who you hang out with the most. But as adults, friends are expected to carry more responsibility than just being around. If you're just someone who's around, you're not really a friend. You're more so an acquaintance. Actual friendship as an adult carries with it a, a greater burden and a greater expectation for sacrifice than friendships do as children. This is why many people say, oh, I've lost 
all my friends or most of my friends when I became an adult. It isn't that you lost most of your friends when you became an adult. It's that you realized that those people who you were hanging out with really weren't your friends. They were just people you hung out with, but they weren't ever anyone that had your back in, in the long run. And that's a sobering pill that many people have to realize is that, yeah, when you're a kid and you don't have a car or you're in a certain group or it, you just connect and mingle with different people. But when you become an adult and you're off doing your own thing, having a friend call you up and bailing them out or doing things for them, like I've, I've done things for my friends. My friends have done things for me. And over the years, that's just how it is. That's what that's what a true friend does. A true friend is there for you. But when you're a kid, you don't necessarily need that. When you're a teenager, I mean, the most you're going to be doing for your friends is giving them a ride or letting them spotting lunch for them. It's not ever going to be something where you're going to be spending hordes and scats of money or putting yourself personally on the line for things. But as an adult, that's exactly what happens. So this can apply to friendships. This can apply for, to people who are constantly trying to help others when they really need to be trying to help and maintain themselves. Because how are you going to help other people if you yourself are in, are in need? So I see how some people have that interdependency or they crave that interdependency, that safety net that you make with your own body by clasping hands and singing Kumbaya. But real life is, is not like that. And many people will completely and utterly take advantage of people with that mindset, as is often the case. I see it happen all the time. I think everybody knows of examples, even in their own family, where one party is codependent and the other party completely takes advantage of that codependency. So that is basically the first rule is always sin for yourself. Be in love with yourself more so than any girl or any friend. Like you're, you're your own best friend. And as the old saying goes, I, I've, I, money is my best friend because I've never seen a dollar that I didn't like. And that's how you got to be, man. Like you got to be that kind of person where you look in the mirror and you understand this is the person who ultimately has my back. And it sounds depressing, but it's the truth. You are your own rock. And as a man, you have to be your own rock. You can't expect other people to do the emotional heavy lifting for you. That's female brain thinking. And as much as people want to hate, as, as people hate that, they hate when I, when I say that it's true. Men have camaraderie, but men need to be emotionally balanced. Men need to be stable in the way they think about things. They need to be cognizant of the things that they say and the things that they do. And one thing I notice with modern men is they have this non-masculine, highly feminine, over-socialized mindset of having to please the opinions and the feelings and the whims of a bunch of random strangers that don't give a shit if you live or die. They, they would, these same people would walk past you on the street if you had a heart attack or you stumbled, and yet you panic and you cringe at all of these things that you do that what they're, they're going to care about, they have an opinion of. And that's something, again, a lot of men in modern society, myself included, because we seek status by nature, that gets hijacked by a feminized gynocentric society into trying to shame or blame men for all kinds of various woes. Like being a teacher, it was, I was always under this scrutiny, always under this assumption that like I couldn't fully be trusted. And eventually that became intolerable, led to confrontation the whole nine yards. And it's tough being in a situation where you aren't trusted to do your job. That's basically where men are at. We're not trusted to just be functioning members of society, despite being the only ones who didn't take to the streets to shirk off our traditional gender roles like women did. We are still being shamed into staying in those gender roles and all of the expectations that come with it, while modern Western women can act like complete degenerates and face no shame. You can't be called a slut or a sluzy or a scallywag or you, know, you can't you can't call a woman any of those things. And sh surely not the C word, the dreaded C word. But you can call a man whatever you want. You can you can call him like a fuck boy, you can call him an incel, you can call him a beta or you, you can call a man a million things. But sim the, the simp of all the labels you can put on a man, the simp more so than anyone else will embrace the label of being a simp. It's a bizarre phenomenon. I saw it a little bit with the incel, but the thing is that incel got hijacked. The involuntary celibate got hijacked by the mainstream. And now it's a way that women can shame men, you know, these sex positive women 
are using a lack of sex or sex-based language to now shame others because they're hypocrites. But beyond that, simp is the only one where some people, like I showed you in those articles, view it as a positive. And it's not. It, it To be called a simp has always been an insult. Ever since it was first coined after the world, after World War I, simp has always been an indication of some guy who's too stupid to understand that you can't be casting your pearls before swine. You can't be investing in projects that make no sense. You're a simp because you're a sucker, because you're easily fooled and gullible, because women will bat their eyelashes and show some cleavage and expect you to do things for them. They, they expect that you're so easily manipulatable that you'll just roll over like a dog because you see some skin or you see some fucking fat deposit somewhere. And that's the ultimate weakness of men is the female form, the female gaze, whatever you want to say. But the fact that instead of seeing that and understanding, okay, I know myself, I know my limits and having that self-respect, understanding that, you know, is this to my benefit? Am I doing this for my own gain? And if it isn't for my own gain, is it actually towards a greater cause or is it solely to the benefit of this one girl who does not care about me? And the simps do not want to face this question. They want to continue living in a la-la land where they think these women care. And that's the first thing that these fools find out the hard way is that when these women finally get a boyfriend, when you're just a dick in a glass, break in case of breakup, and all you are, all you are is just an easy source of income, then why not walk away? What are you getting out of it? Why not simp for a girl who's actually going to reciprocate? Even if you want to simp, if you want to be that guy who simps, why not simp for a girl who shows interest? Why are you simping for a girl who clearly is not into you? And, and that's basically law number one. You know, simp for yourself first, because the person who's always going to be here for you is you. Your family might not be there for you. This girl definitely is not going to be there for you, but you're always going to be there for yourself. And that brings me to my second law of simping. So I'm pretty sure I misspelled prerequisite here, but anyway, so this was the first law. Simp for yourself first and invest, invest time, energy, and resources in your own life before doing so for anyone else. So I meant to put that up. The second one, respect of self is prerequisite for others to respect you, know your boundaries, and enforce them. So why is this important? So we, we now had two, you know, simping for yourself first and then the respect of self. So respect of self is necessary for others to respect you. If you don't respect yourself, it comes off very obviously to other people. You're basically a walking doormat. People will test you. People will push your boundaries. People will push your buttons. And if you don't give off the subtle clues that that's unacceptable behavior, if you're they make an inappropriate joke and you don't laugh, if they try to pull something on you and you don't speak up, if, if they try to punk you, make a, do a power trip and you're not uh, ready to, to stand up and be counted. And all, honestly, on some minor stuff too, just the ability to banter, just the ability to crack a joke or make a sarcastic quip is enough for most people when they do push and poke to understand, okay, this dude obviously has boundaries. But if you don't have boundaries, if you don't know your boundaries and you can't enforce your boundaries, then that's a signal to everyone else that you have zero self-respect. And if you have zero self-respect, they're not going to respect you back. They're not, nobody respects somebody who doesn't respect themselves. It just, it just displays a, a lack of character, a deficiency of propriety when you are the kind of person who doesn't look after your grooming or your appearance, who lets themselves get terribly out of shape, who says whatever and does whatever, and is sycophantic and always flattering people. And it just shows that it's just, it gives people naturally the heebie-jeebies. This is why like, oh, why do nice guys finish last? It's because women know that you're being nice to try to please them. And it's so, it just displays a lack of maturity. It displays a lack of character. Why the nice guys finish last? It's because women feel like they're being actively manipulated. When men act super duper nice, it just it just turns them off. That's the kind of behavior they expect from their grandfather, not the kind of behavior they expect from a romantic partner. They want a romantic partner with a bit of edge to them, who's fun, who's adventurous, but also somebody 
who's willing to have a spine and not let them get away with all of this shit. They want somebody who will talk back to them and crack a joke at them. They don't want to be with somebody who's acting like their pastor. They want to be with somebody who they actually feel like they can be human with and not feel like they're constantly walking on eggshells who are, who they can actually let their hair, hair down around. And that's why you've got to have self-respect. You've got to understand these boundaries, understand when you're being shit tested by a woman, understand when a woman's just su- trying to suck you dry and get nothing out of you. So that's the prerequisite, the self-respect. You, you can't go anywhere without knowing and understanding where your boundaries are at. Understand that line and don't let people cross it. Don't forgive and don't forget unless that forgiveness is earned. Unless they ask for forgiveness, don't give forgiveness. And that's something where, okay, yeah, it might be controversial to say, but forgiveness is not a given. I don't need to forgive anybody. Your, my forgiveness is not a guarantee. Will I move on with my life? 100%. But don't, don't let people get away with shitty behavior. Straight up. The third point. This is something, again, we live in the 21st century, guys. So the third is eliminate the double standards. If this woman was a man... Would you act this way towards him or tolerate his behavior towards you? So this is both a direct and rhetorical question, but it's also a very, very important law. Eliminate the double standards. If this girl, no matter how hot she is, no matter how well-dressed she is, no matter what she looks like or how she walks or where she works, whatever, whatever, if this was a 35 year old dude with a mullet, would you, would you tolerate this behavior? If you get flaked on, or if you get stood up, or if they don't respond to your text for days and days and days, if they seem to be giving you one sentence answers, if they're talking about, oh, you know, I don't want to meet up. Here's my friend. Da, da, da. Would you tolerate the behavior from a guy? And sometimes you would. Sometimes there's cases where like, okay, yeah, whatever, bro. Like I'll, I'll cop a meal for my friends or if my, one of my dude bros wants to invite more dude bros, like that's cool. But there's many other scenarios where clear double standards are in place and you're not enforcing them. Like you're not actually letting women know and understand that they're equals in this transaction. They want to be equals. Now remember this, they want to be equals. So no matter how red pilled you are, the modern woman, they want to be equal in all of these transactions. They want to be the equal, an equal party in every discussion, in every behavioral interaction. So eliminate the double standards, you know, equal rights means equal fights. And if you're going to be applying double standards to women when they don't even, even they don't want the double standard applied only when it privileges them. Then again, that signals, that signals that you're weak. That signals that you lack a backbone, lack a spine. You, you won't actually hold women to account splitting a bill or even just paying them back, like doing things that you understand. It's not simping to just do good things for people. But understand, like, if this woman was a man, would you be acting this way? Or are you just doing it because she's pretty? And if you're doing it just because she's a pretty girl and for no other reason, then you're a simp. You need to understand that you're simping. You caught yourself simping. You need to eliminate the double standards. Imagine it's just like, you know, that what was his name, Carl from, from uh, Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Like, that's you need to just make every girl, just put that in your mind's eye every time you see a girl, whatever she says, whatever she does, whatever situation you're in. Remember that dude and plaster it directly on onto your retinas and then try again and see if you would actually tolerate that sort of behavior from this person. And most times when you do this, you'll find that actually, no, you wouldn't respect that kind of behavior. So now we have the fourth law. The fourth law is not too shabby. And this one again goes back, it's know your worth. This is something that I said before, but understand that as a man, your sexual marketplace value is inverse compared to women. Your sexual marketplace value will be your lowest in your teens and 20s and the highest in your 40s and 50s. And the reason I say sexual marketplace value is because ultimately a man's reproductive output peaks in his 40s. If you look at the charts, if you look at the data, male reproductive output peaks in the 40s. 
you might have your first kid in your late 20s or early 30s, but you're probably going to be having most of your kids between 35 and 50. That's just how it is, especially in the modern day, but this seems to be the trend going on for over a century now. So you're probably going to be having most of your kids in your 30s and 40s. So know your worth that the exact time when women are going to be hitting the wall and losing almost all of their sexual marketplace value is when a man will truly enter into the flower of his manhood and be the most likely to reproduce, get married, have offspring, et cetera, et cetera. So know your worth guys, like understand that if you're a 20 year old simp doubling your lifespan, you're going to, when you lived and it sounds insane and that's a huge amount of time for sure. But like, by the time you get there, you're going to understand this is basically, this is your life, bro. Like you understand that you only have one trip. You only get one time and you got to understand that no woman on this planet is truly special. It sucks to, it sucks to hear it's the same with dudes, but it's like, when it comes to dating, understand no woman is special. And like the second sentence says, every woman has a pussy and it only depreciates in value as time goes on. So know your worth. Don't let a woman give you the runaround. Don't let a woman give you the runaround. All this woman is bringing to the table for you is genitals or a womb. There are very few women out there who will actually genuinely invest in a relationship. Again, unless they have this codependency going on, unless they were just raised right and have a solid mindset, you'll find that 90% of women are absolute gives me dads. They want gives both from the government and from your boy. So don't, this is, so again, don't cast your pearls in force wine. Don't let yourself be milked by a wallet parasite. Many of these passport bros that I know, because I, I was passport, technically passport grown before it was even a term. I know a lot of these guys, it's like going to foreign countries and getting a wife. Like I know Edwin did that and you gotta understand, bro. Like it's a transaction. Some of these girls are out hunting. They want that green card. They want that, um, they want that income. They want that security blanket. And there's nothing wrong with that. But just like a guy wants a, a young, beautiful woman, a woman wants a well-to-do high status male. That's just how it works. Hypergamy with men and hypergamy with women manifest in two different forms. It's one man sleeping with a large amount of women, and it's a lot of women sleeping with one man. Either way you slice it, the, benef the benefactors of hypergamy are both ways. It's just that more women can engage in hypergamous behavior than men, and by its very necessity, only a tiny minority of men can engage in hypergamous behavior reliably. But every man is going to try to maximize his odds to find a mate. So if a man does have the opportunity to be hypergamous, most will take it. This is what perpetuates hypergamy with, with enforced state monogamy. You, you wouldn't see this hypergamous behavior from either men or women. You as a man would be expected to get married and have a family. Being a womanizer was just as much a stigma as it was to be a, a hussy running the streets as a woman. Being running the streets as a man, running the streets as a woman carried an almost equal amount of shame back in the day. And people forget that. People are like, oh, well, men can sleep with whoever they want. There's no stigma. I'm like, since when? Since when has that been the case? Like, I, I every time I hear a woman say this, because they always pull out the master lock key thing. I'm like, that's a, I, I even hate the entire, the entire pitch because it's not true. For almost all of our society's history until the modern day, you couldn't just be a, a womanizing man whore. You couldn't do that. You would be seen as a charlatan. No one would want anything to do with you. And for these women who keep getting with these men, these like movie star types, it's like, you're not Frank Sinatra. It's hard for men to actually get away with that, especially in smaller, tighter knit communities. If you're known as a womanizer, no woman's going to want to be with you, especially not like, you know, your family, family members. If you have to go ask a, a father's blessing for a marriage and he knows that you're a womanizer, he's going to say no. You know, the, the family gets a say in who the daughter marries in nine out of every 10 circumstances back in the day. And so you're not doing this to impress a female. You're doing this to impress her father, which again, enforces a society where providers end up the guys who are best able to maintain civilization end up getting families and reproducing not just the guys who are the prettiest or the guys who are the most attractive because then women will naturally select for traits that are interest specifically combative and that's not conducive to civilization every single society that lets women have free reign over mate selection it is in the stone age it's it's unironically not conducive to pick for traits that are like high impulsivity and 
high amounts of attention deficit. Like we don't want that. Those intelligence and productivity are not sexually selected traits in human beings, and they never have. Athleticism and impulsiveness have always been, they've always been selected for it because impulsiveness shows not only creativity, but also confidence. And again, just physical attractiveness is a physical attractiveness. Women are drawn to beauty the same way men are. It's just that with women, there's a, there's an extra caveat where you also want a man to provide. But again, because women expect that provision, it's not just looking handsome, but also being able to provide something, know your worth. And again, go back to rule three, to eliminate the double standards and know your worth. Much of this is sequential. Once you have the self-respect down, don't let women get away with it. If it's like, if you're over here making a lot of money, be like Chris Brown. He says he doesn't F with broke bitches. Be Mac Dre, you know, no doho, you can't mess with me. Like, come on, you, you gotta, you gotta understand the decade and the century you're living in. Don't, don't let women walk alone. Again, the guys who simp, if you're just simping and you're in the friend zone, we've all been there. But if you're one of these guys that's giving money to women's only fans and you're paying for whatever subscription service or somebody's Patreon, again, you're just letting these people siphon you dry. Women who were like, like looking at Amaranth, a woman in her mid thirties, a mother in her mid thirties, who you're throwing all this money at, like, are you getting anything out of this now? You don't even know your worth. You can get a woman who looks like that on any corner. If you have the resources and money to throw at this chick, the same amount of money you can invest in yourself. You can get better clothes, a nicer car. You go to the, afford a really nice gym membership and nutrition plan and make, you can make yourself a giga chat, but you won't. Like I'm broke as hell and I look great. Like you don't have an excuse. You don't need to make a lot of money to lose weight. You don't need to make a lot of money to, to groom yourself and have semi-decent, like decent looking clothing. If that even matters, like you just gotta be, you, ju you just gotta know your own wavelength. You've gotta understand that you gotta do the basic things to maximize your value in the sexual marketplace. Because as a man, this is cutthroat and women are fickle, but at the same time, Again, the shoe's going to drop eventually. And no matter where you go in the world, I mean, this is why I tell people to get a passport because go where you're wanted. Don't stick around with Western women who don't appreciate you when you could get someone overseas. But again, know what she's offering too. This better, this woman, no hymen, no diamond. This foreign broad better not have a single dick in her, better have an intact hymen, better have a, a religious background with both parents. It's, guys are going out here and picking up the riffraff from Southeast Asia and South America. And it's honestly like, what are you doing? What are you doing? This woman is, is oh, she, she's had two boyfriends. This woman is considered a whore in her home country. Like knowing a dude from India who's, who, who goes to India, gets engaged to this girl who's had three boyfriends and admits to it. I'm like this woman is a, a hussy. You could get a ton of beautiful virgin women all throughout Southeast Asia and South Asia, but you choose a chick that already has a body count of three or four. So it's like, understand your worth, know what you are, because a lot of dudes walk around with garbage self-esteem and they let, they just don't think they have any worth. And you've got to understand as a man, it doesn't matter who you are, what you look like. If you don't have worth and you can build it, but always remember, bro, you're more than just your ball sack. You're more than just your genitals. And there's not many women that can say the same. They literally live their entire lives off of getting validation off of their looks and nothing else. But also understand my next point. And because again, these are a lot of hard to swallow pills and I'm coming at you fast with them. But again, this is a fifth choice and this is, or a fifth law rather, but it is a choice. So attraction is not a choice. Attraction is not a choice, guys. doesn't matter what this, I've been rejected by land whales and had nine out of 10 blonde girls in my bed on the second date. Let me tell you that again. I, I've been rejected by fours and pounced on by nines. And that's just the way it is, or A9. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna stop the cap. It's, it was A9 and A4, but I, I've been rejected plenty of times by women who honestly wouldn't shake a stick at these days. I've dated women that are much more attractive than Many of the women who've rejected me, 
Because attraction is not a choice. It doesn't matter if this woman is ugly. If she's not attracted to you, she's not attracted to you. I met one girl who didn't like the fact that I had long hair. I met one girl who didn't like the fact that I couldn't like speak a particular language. I'm, I, I've had been rejected by women for having facial hair, for not having facial hair. I've been rejected by women for not being as taller than them. I've been rejected by women for being, um, you know, a, a certain, like not being big enough, not being husky enough, despite being in shape. And I've, I've also met women who are totally down for the way I look and the way I act. So understand your type, dude. Understand what you look like. It's like, how am I going to attract and make myself look like the kind of guy that will attract the kind of women that I want? I like hippie women. I, I like women who are alternative th thinkers. And that's the kind of women that I'm attracting by my very nature. So understand attraction is not a choice. There's nothing you can give a woman that'll make her fall in love with you. It doesn't matter how many Porsches you buy. It doesn't matter how long you subscribe to her OnlyFans. It doesn't matter how many dinners you get for her. It doesn't matter how many presents you get, how many good morning messages or birthday remembrances or things you do for her family. It doesn't matter how much you do for a woman. If she's not attracted to you in a romantic way, you will never get with her. You will never be with her. You will never escape the friend zone. And when talk, guys talk about escaping the friend zone, it, it's all just a crapshoot. It's either the woman is just, you're just one of the dudes from roster. You were, again, a dick in a glass, break in case of breakup. You were just the, the dude on her rotation. It was finally your turn to ride the carousel. You, you were just the next pony in line. And it may have taken you six or eight months to get there. But in many, 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 many cases, I think in the majority of cases, most dudes are never going to get it. This is why if you do end up in the friend zone, leave. Leave that shit. Boom, bro, delete that girl's number. Maybe say hi to her if you pass her in the hallway. But give it up, dude. Give it up. Attraction is not a choice. You cannot make a woman attracted to you. And even if you are, even if even if she is attracted to you, if she's not feeling you, if she's not reciprocating your feelings or your intentions, then again, move on. There's billions of women on this planet Earth, and you're going to waste it on some broad who does not who does not like you and does not feel attracted to you. So again, there's nothing you can give a woman to make her fall in love with you. Not a single thing, no matter what she says, no amount of material or temporal or energy investment is going to make this woman fall in love with you, dude. It's a fluke. This is why women are fickle. They might you, they might get the ick from you onto some shit, and from then on, they, they'll never like you. It's like, dude, you can't give a shit about what women think. This is why I tell dudes all the time, stop caring what people think. Not just women, but men too, but especially women. Do not give a fuck what women think because they are fickle. They change their minds based on their moods. They're hormonally volatile. They do not have a clear fucking way to divorce their their feelings from any logical process. you just got to go with the flow. If they fall out of love with you, they're interested and they go hot, they go cold, move on. Have an abundance mindset like these dudes say and go to on some to some other women. Chase some other women and stop wasting your time. And so that brings us to the sixth law, which is a bit of a tie-in. But here's the sixth law. Focus on cultivating yourself, not impressing others, because there's only two rules of dating. Be attractive don't be unattractive. Now, I know there's guys out there like alpha male strategies, Griffin mind, manosphere strategies and tactics, uh, some pickup artist dudes out there, uh, Coach Adams, um, even Kevin Samuels. But I'm not going to, again, his, his message is uh, like he had two different messages, one for men, one for women. But focus on cultivating yourself, not impressing others. Cultivating yourself means what I mentioned earlier. Unironically hit the gym. Spend less time on your phones. Go outside and touch grass. It's things like reading a book, building up your mind, building up your spirit, building up your body. That's self-cultivation. You, you, you are a walking garden. Your body is a temple. You need to maintain and build your temple. Don't be the kind of guy that walks around 300 effing pounds talking about, oh, I'm big boned, dude. I have diabetes. I can't lose weight. Like Meat Canyon, 
uh, Nikita Avocado, like some of these comic creators I know, it's like, me, Canyon's diabetic. I'm like, bro, you make jokes about being overweight. You make jokes about being diabetic. But like, look at Patrice O'Neill. Look at Ralphie May. Look at these comedians who their entire career has made fun of the fact they were big and di- diabetic and then ended up dying young. Understand that these insecurities are not there to, to hurt yourself. You know, self-respect doesn't just mean, and self-love doesn't just mean accept yourself for who you are 100%. It's also understanding the things that you can change in your life that will be a positive. Don't let yourself get overweight. If you're getting breakouts, cut back on the sugar, cut back on the carbs and wash your face every night. If your teeth are bad, brush your teeth and floss twice a day. Use mouthwash, get a whitener, or maybe just go to the dentist. Understand that you got to cultivate yourself, learn a skill, learn a trade, go to school, get a degree, whatever it takes, get certifications, get forklift certified, get chainsaw certified, get your CDL, go get your class A, class A license, get burn certified, you know, go, go do uh, first aid training, you know, build certificate. Like one of the things, and I gotta, I gotta, I gotta keep on, uh, I gotta keep on some eggshells here talking about Hawaii, but one of the things that I've noticed being in Hawaii with these native Hawaiians is many of them, for example, are pretending like they can sit around all day and smoke weed, which is based. Don't get me wrong. It's completely based, but then they expect to have their mud hut in Waikiki. They expect to have their little uh, two acre villa in Honolulu or Pearl City. And it's just not realistic. They want to live in a resort area, but they can't pass a piss test to go and get into a career that'll help them do better. Instead of going and becoming carpenters, instead of going and becoming mechanics, instead of going and becoming landscapers or teachers or just entrepreneurs selling crafts on the countryside. And you see plenty of people they do wood carving, they do bead stringing, they do traditional weaving. Like you can even do your traditional cultural arts or music and make a living for yourself, going around doing gigs, singing, going around weaving baskets, weaving traditional items to sell to tourists. Those people are doing fine. Those people aren't struggling. Who's struggling? All these homeless people are people who are completely strung out on drugs. I mean, even the people who are homeless over here, like I, I watched this thing where this, where this lady, I think her name was, um, what was it? It wasn't like, it was like Crinkle or Prinkle, whatever her name is, but she bought several, <laughs> like she managed to get several acres of land together to make basically an encampment for a bunch of people who were homeless. Like she was homeless, a bunch of other people were homeless. And yet they banded together, they got land. There's the the nation of Hawaii, where they did the same thing. They occupied this area. They protested until they got a parcel of land specifically for them. And I, I'm seeing a lot of how these people, how these natives are standing up for themselves, how they invest in themselves, invest in their communities. And what do you know? These people who start out homeless, these people who start out as squatters, now own their lands outright. It's funny how that works. It's almost as if, if you invest in something, if you cultivate yourself, you cultivate your community, cultivate your people, you can actually move somewhere. You can actually go somewhere. You can actually increase your income. You can actually increase your standing in society. But instead, you just want gives me dads. You want to live like an urchin. You want, you want to live your days in a drug-filled stupor every single day for the rest of your life and expect to get, in, get somewhere. And you're not. You're not. And that applies... And that's been people dealing with the government, dealing with the housing market. That isn't even people dealing with dating. This is this is something where if you don't focus on cultivating yourself, you're not going to get anywhere in life in general, especially not with women. So don't try to impress other people. Just just focus on yourself. Don't give a crap what other people think. Don't don't give a crap about impressing people who would step over you on the street if, if you suddenly had nothing to give them or provide for them. Because remember, in dating, there's only two rules. There's only one strategy when it comes to when it comes to dating, and that's to be attractive. You can you can apply every strategy in the book. You can try to be as alpha male as you want. You can try to be as sigma male as you want. You can give women gifts. You can be cold. You can be like the mysterious type, not being too open. 
you know, you can put on a chisane, you know, oh, I got my chisane, I got my watch, you know, I got my nice clothes in my car. You can, you can try to front, you can try to floss, you can try to flex. But at the end of the day, is a woman attractive? I know many women who don't give a fiddler's fuck if you have anything like that. They want to know if you can read a book. They want to know if you can hold a conversation about their favorite show. Like when you're confronted with that, it's like, yeah, you can you can be the type of dude. Like again, look at a guy like Andrew Tate. How does he get girls, bro? He goes after women who admire strength. Most of women are they're repulsed by his misogyny, would never touch him with a 10-foot pole. Other women they throw themselves at them or at him. And one girl's a four out of ten, would never let Andrew Tate touch her with a 10-foot pole. The other girl's a nine out of ten. Slovenian bombshell and she'll gargle his nuts every single day of the week. That's attraction. That's what attraction is. There are guys out there who push the right buttons for the right number of women, know their type, know their crowd and into pulling because they understand how to market themselves to their target audience. I'm not trying to market myself to DIY makeup channels. That is, that is never going to work out. Even if I start doing hair product reviews, they're going to look at my other episodes and be like, what the, what the hell is this? I'm not trying to market to like cartoon channels. I'm not a cartoonist. I don't make cartoons. So why, why would I care about what a cartoonist fan has to say or a, a DIY makeup fan has to say about me? I'm not even in your field. I'm not even, this is what women say is like, oh, he's not my type. What she means is you're not the brand of dude she's looking for. And understand that attraction is non-negotiable. It's not a choice. No matter what you do, what strategies you have, you, you know your brand, you go after it. But there's only two rules to dating. Be attractive, don't be unattractive. And you feel like you're unattractive to most women, try to figure out why that is and change it. Because dating is not easy. It doesn't, bro, I got, you, and even the most chad tier dude is going to be rejected by a majority of women he approaches. I learned this with my brother. My, brother, my oldest brother has the highest body count of any man I've ever met. He was successful with women, even though he was a complete slob, he was overweight, but he was tall, he was bold. And again, the same, those same traits, the aesthetics and the impulsiveness, he had those in spades. And so we ended up getting women because he mostly went after hood rats. I'm, I'm serious. He went after hood rats who were attracted to that kind of male behavior, who didn't give a shit if you weren't flossed up. But these guys, these simps going after these college age girls whose mommy and daddy gives them hundred thousand dollars in a trust fund. Yeah. Good luck impressing that girl, bro. With your, with your rented out Lamborghini and your chain that you're paying off in deposits. You're not going to impress a girl like that. Attraction is not a choice. Just cultivate yourself. Be your own man. You, it's just not going to happen if you don't. But that also leads into point number seven. I think is another excellent, excellent follow-up for this, but okay. The comment was a little long. If a woman isn't giving you what you want in your relationship, isn't heading in the right uh, direction you wish, then leave and look for someone more compatible. Okay. I'm going to read that again. If a woman isn't giving you what you want or your relationship isn't heading in the direction you wish, then leave and look for someone more compatible. Do not waste your time with, uh, with girls who are not right for you. What does this mean? What does this mean, guys? What does it mean to walk, know when to walk away? Understand the sunk cost fallacy of a relationship. This goes beyond simping. And you might think, like, what does this have to do with simping? This has to do with the fact that if you're in the friend zone and you don't want to be in the friend zone, if you're sitting here and you're wondering, oh, when is she finally going to turn a corner and see how right I am for her? You know, I'm trying to be her type. I'm trying to be the kind of guy she describes as her dream man. Like our, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's Lost World, it all started because bruh, the main protagonist, wanted to protect, um, impress a girl that he liked by going on an adventure. And when he came back, it turns out she got married in his absence to some short ginger nigga. And she's like, oh, well, you left me alone. This dude chased a girl who he knew wasn't right for him, who cared about esoteric bullshit and didn't care about him. And because she changed her mind and she switched up, he walked out laughing. 
it ended because the absurdity of it all was that she was attracted by a guy who was an adventurer. And in that absence, he ended up cultivating himself, becoming a renowned explorer and naturalist. And who the fuck was she? She was married to some... She, what you saw was the entire time he was the catch. She ended up having to settle for some short ginger dude who was 10 years older than her. She had to settle. He's now a naturalist. He's now a renowned explorer. He brought back a fucking pterodactyl for crying out loud. And who the hell is she? She's just some, some broad married to this nigga now. And the reason that bruh laughed at the end of the book and walked out is because I know for sure his sexual marketplace value is now much higher than it was before. He won't have any trouble finding a girl that will appreciate him for him because he already understands his wavelength. He understands his purpose and he's achieved more in life than just impressing a girl. He's actually made something of himself now. This is why if a woman isn't giving you what you want in your relationship, if you have a girlfriend and she's not supportive, if she's just a source of stress and not a source of strength, ditch her. You don't owe her a single thing. This is why marriage is such a scam in 2023. It's because men get with these garbage ass women and they, out of loneliness, will settle for them, look, overlook pathological behaviors, put a ring on the finger and then find out, oh man, you're two into marriage. Shit is not going well. You, you have a kid on the way, but this woman's crazy. She makes your life hell. That should have already been vetted. I don't feel sorry for men who are in miserable marriages. And the reason I say this is because you should have better vetted your wife and had the, uh, had the balls to walk away when you notice these borderline personality traits. But you didn't. So again, any guy who's in a dead bedroom, any dude who's in a shitty marriage, any dude who's in a loveless relationship, I don't feel sorry for you, nigga. Walk the fuck away. Don't come to me and bitch and cry and moan over your beer, ordering a Heineken, insulting it with your tears. I don't want to fucking hear it. This is one big reason why I stopped hanging out with dudes. Is because, yeah, we get around and we bitch about women, but don't bitch about dating. You know, we, I, I'm, my entire bread and butter is talking about this kind of stuff. But these guys, they stay in loveless, passionateless relationships and expect sympathy from me. No nigga walk away. No nigga walk away. Just walk the hell away and look for somebody who's more compatible. Don't waste your time with girls who are not right for you because all you're doing is wasting time. You're overlooking all these other women that will probably be right for you because you're too spineless. You don't have enough respect for yourself to be able to detach. You're too afraid of the loneliness. You're too afraid of uh, losing out this FOMO. Of like, oh, what if... What if I'll end up regretting this for the rest of my life? And if you think so low of yourself that you won't be able to find a woman who's actually decent for you, then maybe you should just give up. But again, quitters never win and winners never quit. And this ties in right into number eight. This ties right into number eight. This one is avoid one-way relationships. If a woman is not simping for and investing in you, then she's nothing more than a glorified prostitute. Now, this is some pretty harsh language, but it is 100% the case. It is 100% the truth. Don't let somebody use you, manipulate you without any return on investment. Why would you put money into a stock or put money into a business, put money into anything? that you expect to give you something back. Because again, the relationship is transactional, whether it's time, whether it's just, just looking at a girl, if she's flaking on you, if she only comes around to ask you for money or to go on a, some dinner date or only approaches you to use you as an emotional tampon when her boyfriend's acting up, then get the fuck out of there. Get out of there, man. If you have to, if you, if the only way a woman is gonna see you sleep with you, be around you, is if you give her something, if you're giving her free food, or you're giving, even giving straight, just giving her money in general, she's a, she's a prostitute. She's a prostitute. Just go hire a literal, actual prostitute. It'll probably be cheaper. It'll probably be cheaper. These dudes these in the friend zone, you're not, this is why almost I don't like the term friend zone, because it implies you're actually friends. No, you're not. You're not friends. This one, this one wouldn't have anything to do with you if you weren't providing something for her. 
question mark. So the one way relationships also apply to bosses. They apply to businesses. They apply to clientele. If you're running a business and you're doing something for a client and the client is not responding to your invoices, you're not going to keep on trying to do stuff for that client. If I go and I fix your, fix your leaky pipe or I landscape your garden and you don't pay me, then there's going to be problems. In most cases, you have to pay for services. You don't just get to run around in life getting stuff for free and everything just goes hunky-dory for you. That's not how this works. But too many men are fully and willing to allow this to happen both in the workplace and at home, both with women and employers. They let people walk all over them, do whatever they want, take up all their time, take up all their energy and resources, and they don't understand when that it's one way. This is why I always encourage guys to become entrepreneurs. If you have the opportunity to be your own boss, be your own boss. But even then, even in a business, you're still getting paid. Like some people will work overtime for free. And I don't do that. Like in my current job, it's like, oh, you know, stay an extra hour to make sure I have the X, Y, Z water. I have one coworker that does that. I'm like, dude, you're, we're getting, a, we're getting the money regardless. You're not getting any money for working overtime. You're not getting any extra pay for working overtime. Why are you working overtime? And that's, I know that's a thing in like certain countries. Like I know a little bit in Germany, though not anymore, somewhat in Japan, but I, I heard that things are changing in that regard. Don't allow yourself to be a human doormat. Don't allow yourself to just be milked for your, for your energy, for your capital without any return on investment. And, and guys, they understand this from a business perspective. This applies to men and women, but it's like men understand this from a business perspective. Women understand this from a business and a romantic perspective. But for some reason, many men will absolutely disregard this when it comes to romance. This is why even though marriage is one of the worst contracts ever devised in modern American history, men still engage in allowing the government to interfere with their marriage, interfere with their relationship. We had a very, very confused person drop by who clearly did, like, did not know what they were looking at. But that's what that means. So just avoid those one relationships. And here's an interesting one. I guess this is kind of out of left field, but this is something that I've learned personally over time just makes sense. And that's that dating should be akin to fishing, not hunting. Don't chase women. It just comes off as desperate. Instead, put yourself out there and let the interested parties bite the lure. And I hear all the time from guys like, oh, you don't ask a, a, fisher, a fish how to catch a fish. You ask a fisherman, not knowing that fish hunt other fish all the time. How a fish will approach dating and how a fisherman will approach dating. I mean, they just kind of swim around and spawn eggs, right? Like a fisherman is going fishing because he doesn't want to go out dating. He's has a wife at home. So I don't understand the, uh, the analogy, but I do think that the actual act of fishing is a better allegory or rather an analogy for dating than hunting is don't hunt for women. Don't hunt for clientele. Don't hunt for viewers. Don't hunt for, for anything, but like opportunity. There's things that you definitely should be hunting for like a good deal at, at the store. Like you should be hunting for things that are on sale. Nothing wrong with that. But there are certain things when it comes to people, again, like I mentioned earlier, attraction isn't a choice. If somebody likes you or not, it's not, I'm not going to sit here and suck the dick of every person who comes to my live stream just so they can subscribe or like my, like my stuff. That's not how life works. Whether they like you, whether they don't like you, whether they want to stick around, that is completely and utterly up to them. There's nothing you can spin plates you can beg, you can sing ukulele. It doesn't matter because at the end of the day, what you're trying to do is simply get interested parties to congregate around what you're trying to sell or put yourself out. And when it comes to dating, what you're selling is everything. When you're selling a product, you're selling like the product. You can add things to it to help it be more marketable. But when it comes to something like dating, you're not selling a service. You're selling your entire being, both the good and the bad, the positive, the negative, all of your weaknesses, all your vulnerabilities and neuroticisms, 
all of your strengths, all of your assets. It's all on the table. It's all in. This is not a game of blackjack where you're going to sit down and like throw in a little chip here or there. You are all in every time you play your hand. That's why I think so many dudes find dating exhausting. They feel like it's a job application, but it's even more than that. Because you have to not only find someone who likes you for the way you look and what you're doing in life and where you're trying to go, but also is willing to overlook all of these flaws and negative baggage that you naturally are carrying with you from childhood. Every single traumatic event that's ever happened to you, every single thing that triggers you, your bad mood, your bad breath, everything, every single aspect of your personality and being has to be accepted by this person. So don't go out hunting for these people. It's just going to exhaust you. You're going to spend all this time trying to market yourself when in reality you should be sitting back and waiting people to take the, take the bait. So this is why like you cultivate yourself, you build yourself up, you hit the gym, you get in shape, you wash your face every night, you brush your teeth, you know, get good hygiene, focus on your physique, focus on your purpose, try to make money, try to build skills, and assets and just let them come to you let the let the women come to you let the clients come to you and what's up dz welcome to the trenches my my shaky ass camera because my internet is chugging along but that's why i say again many men have said don't chase women but you definitely should if you feel the bite you should definitely yank the lure i think many dudes they hear like don't chase women as the women will do all the heavy lifting when they're in finally interested. No, like when they take the bait, when you feel a nibble on that hook, bro, you've got to yank. You've got to, you got to make sure that hook is in deep and then reel them in. You don't go out with a, with a spear and, and you know, you should look up how, how many people actually go out with a bow and catch something bow hunting. Very low, very low. If you're going out there with a spear or a rock or bow and arrow, like it's like being, if you're a Chad, then you're born with like a Remington 600. If you're an average dude, you're born with like an, a flint nap spear. Understand, unless you're Giga Chad or Giga Tyrone and you're born with an AR-15, then yeah, you can probably go out hunting for them. You can probably go out and cold approach women and they'll get with you because you have you have it all. If you go out in the woods with an AR-15, I can go out in the woods right now and shoot a dozen birds and an axis deer and a boar if I just had a gun. But if, I'm, if I was born with a slingshot, bro, and I'm slingshot, nigga. I can't be going like what what am I doing for myself trying to go around shooting, shooting, you know, chicks with crossbows or or with, with a slingshot? It doesn't work. You gotta wait. You gotta wait till they get in range. You gotta wait till conditions are just right and then strike, be decisive. So this is why I say dating should be like fishing, not hunting. Don't the simp will naturally feel like because I've invested time, energy, and resources. I should expect a return. And again, that gives that only gives women the ick because, again, they want to act like prostitutes, not feel like prostitutes. The second thing is, too, is it comes off as extremely desperate. If you're sitting there looking like bait, she's going to bite. If you're out spearfishing, you have to swim all the way up to her. She's going to run away and you have to put in way more energy to spear her and reel her in. And sometimes most of the time you're going to miss. So the better game to play is just to sit back and relax, sit back, relax, and put yourself out there. You can't catch a fish sitting at home. You still got to cast your reel and you got to sit there for hours, hours, hours. You can have a lot of fish nibble at the bait, but not take it. But the moment a fish takes the bait, you've got to be on that shit. And that's what dating's like. That's, that's my ninth rule. And that's something where it's just generally decent dating advice that I just have to, I have to put that out there. Like don't confuse the passivity of non of, of the abundance mindset, as as many have described it, don't confuse something like the abundance mindset with indecisiveness. Know when the bait is being taken. Know when your lure is bobbing under the water. Some will nibble and dip, but the moment you feel a yank on the line, you've got to pull it in with all your might. You've got to really take advantage of when you notice a woman is interested in you. And that apply again, that also applies to business. Understand when a client is genuinely interested and reel them in. So don't hunt, just fish. My tenth, my tenth law, it's the second to last law. My tenth law 
is do not stand up for or defend people that wouldn't do the same to you. Exposing yourself to confrontation with those with whom you share no allegiances will not benefit you whatsoever. So you might notice this has nothing to do with dating or women. This has absolutely zero to do with, with sexual compatibility or romance. This is just straight up, don't be a bitch. Don't be a punk ass nigga. Basically, in a nutshell. Don't be a punk. Don't, don't be a punk, but at the same time, don't be a sucker either. So part of having self-respect, part of having boundaries is understanding who actually has your back and who doesn't. Like I mentioned earlier, in childhood, you feel like you have a lot of friends. And in adulthood, you feel like you lose all these friends that you made in high school and in college. But what you ultimately are realizing over time is that these were relationships of convenience. These were relationships that were totally based on the right people being in the right place at the right time. But the actual investment of being a friend as an adult, being there for somebody, being able to take a financial or even personal risk for somebody else, that's a prerequisite to being a friend as an adult. When you're a kid, maybe not. I mean, like sometimes, yeah, like if your buddy's getting his ass beat in a fist fight in the bathroom at school, maybe as a good friend, you would step in. Or maybe if you had a car, none of your friends had a car, then you would carpool. But in the modern day, if you're an adult, you're on your own, even if you're living with family, you're living with roommates, don't, don't forget to understand how people relate themselves to you. Why is this person actually in your life? What have they provided to you so far to encourage the behavior you're doing now? If you're going out of your way and sticking your neck out for somebody, but they've never done the same for you, and they don't seem to have any intention of doing that, and it's like you're just not even really that close. They're more like just an acquaintance, but you're still going super out of your way for this person. How does that make any sense? What that signals to people is that, one, you definitely want something out of them. When, whenever, some, whenever you do this for somebody, it almost never gets taken as kindness. It either gets taken as weakness or as manipulation. So it's either seen as a blatant form of, of manipulation in the sense that you definitely are trying to curry favor with them or you want something out of them, or it just comes off as extremely sycophantic and, and sad because it seems like you're just trying to impress them for the sake of impressing them, but you're doing something so rational, logical that it just makes you look dumb. It makes you look basically just weak. If you stick your neck up for somebody, they'll think like, oh, that was really nice of them, but then that's it. There's no feeling of equity or reciprocity there because what you've done is so out of character for your established relationship or dynamic that you're not actually really gaining the benefit that you think you're getting from it. You've gone above and beyond to get a result that you could have gotten by just doing something small, like going out and so like somebody complains, oh, there's no coffee in the office. Are you going to remedy that by buying a food processor and a big bag of coffee and grinding it up and providing them? Like sometimes, bro, like, yes. I mean, sometimes you do that. And it's like, yeah, that's cool. But are you going to go and buy that person personally, their own espresso machine that costs like two and a half thousand dollars or get them a Keurig, just like a brand new Keurig and a bunch of pods to last them the whole year? No, that's ridiculous. That's that's a that's way too big of of a gift to give somebody solely for complaining of not having coffee in the morning. That feels like you're way overdoing it. And I think most people they would feel uncomfortable receiving something that's just that's so so generous from somebody who they just don't really see as being that close to them. Like if it was your grandma that gave you a brand new curate because you complained you didn't have coffee completely different. That's like, oh, wow, grandma, you know, that's like, that's a come up because you expect your grandma to have your back. If it's just some random dude from your work, you're like, okay, like, what does this dude want from me? So it sets off alarm bells. You got to understand that you got to also be strategic in how you apply your resources. Even if you want to do something nice, even if you feel like you have a moral obligation to stand up and do something for someone and understand that if they won't do the same for you, there's no point. Like watching a lot of these people who are um, uh, pro-Palestine, but also LGBT or whatever. And they're like, oh, 
the, the, the far right wants to ban um, homosexual clubs or whatever, or whatever. And they go up to someone who's pro-Palestinian and they're like, yeah, I agree with that because I'm, uh, I'm a traditional Muslim and we throw people off roof rooftops that think this way back home. And people are shook. They're like, oh my God, I can't believe that, you know, these people, they, they want to they wanna throw us off rooftops and cut our heads off. And it's just, it's tiring. It's very tiresome to deal with people who just don't understand that altruism can be pathological too. You know, you don't, you're standing up and defending people who don't have your best interest. That goes all the way up to a national level. But I mean, that's getting really political, but entire nations fall for that shit. So you understand where you fall within this dichotomy, understand where just being a nice person, just being a nice guy, just being a gentleman has its limits. And understand that, like, you can't do everything for everyone. Eventually, you just got to have to help yourself. <laughs> Game over. It's, it's, it's all ogre. It's ogre. And here's another one. I kind of I kind of dumped on this earlier, but this is the last of my 11 laws. But I do think that it is something that just over time I've learned. So it's it's kind of split it's split a little bit, but it essentially says stay mysterious. Stay mysterious. Never be an open book and keep them guessing. Predictability will cause women to become comfortable or even confident in the way that they handle you. Never let them think that they have you figured out. Now, this is important because even though earlier I said that, okay, attraction is not a choice. There's only two rules and that's attractive. Don't be unattractive in that there's really nothing you can do strategically to make sure that a woman won't suddenly fall in or out of love with you. You don't be an open book either. Don't but hold your cards close to your, close to your chest. You don't want people to think that they have you figured out. I know for a fact that me oversharing about my life has led to women thinking that they know me. And that has led to many a shit test, even in the modern day for me. Even since I've arrived in Hawaii, I've already experienced women thinking that they know me simply because I divulge a few sensitive details about my life. Bingo. Be a silent stoic mofo all the time. You cannot, you cannot overshare because they think that just because they know a few sensitive details about your past, that they have you completely figured out. And it's shocking. Women who are not psychologists, who don't have degrees, who don't have any clue about even themselves and their own psychology will be the first to think that they have you solved. They, they think they have you solved like a CAPTCHA. They think you have, they have, you're solved like a Rubik's cube. They're like, okay, I got the one, two switcheroo. I know what this dude's all about. They immediately put you in a box. And I know for me, I mean, there's a lot of things I don't share. There's a lot of things that I haven't shared about myself. And I do that deliberately. Mm -hmm. Things that are very, very, very sensitive topics that I deliberately do not tell other people. Because I know that if I told them, like, they would either judge me, they would see me in a different light. So be careful about the information you share. Be very, very careful about the information you share to other people. This is why even the idea of starting my channel and having my face in it was was such it was such a gamble like when i first did these chop ups i'm like oh you know i could see people come here and i even deleted it off my social media like now the only way you can find me is through looking me up on youtube but i realized like you know i don't want people's impression of me to change solely because they hear what i actually have to say about something that they may not like and again it's we live in a sad sad society where people's personal feelings about a topic or an issue will cause you to essentially fall out or they'll hate you for it or they'll completely disregard all of the good about you because there's just one topic that you don't agree on. And I found that to be disgusting. But ultimately, again, that goes back to the whole point 10, which is don't give a shit. You can't really care about what other people have to say about you if <laughs> talking to yourself and me. Don't forget, don't forget DZ, bro. Don't get don't forget DZ Jazz. He's here too. And Kaiju, Kaiju was here. I, I don't really know if the uh, the actual view count is accurate. I know it updates from time to time, but there'll be people floating in here that uh, that uh, that won't show up. So I understand, but also I re-upload. So I haven't been able to re-upload because of internet issues, but I will probably start re-uploading. That's where my bread and butter is, I guess, if they, you can call it bread and butter. The live streams, again, they're just ways for me to to pitch it out. 
but uh, but it helps. It, it does really help. Uh, anybody who drops by or leaves a comment, it all it all works. But these were actually my eleven laws. So my eleven laws, I think, are fairly comprehensive. I know I'm probably going to build on them in the future, try to keep them going. But like the like the Discord said, ultimately, it is a matter of self respect, and cultivating self respect. People always wonder how it's easy, so much easier said than done. It's like telling somebody who's depressed to be happy. How does that work? How do you get somebody who's chronically depressed to suddenly find purpose in life? How do you find someone with no self-respect to suddenly gain self-respect? The way you do this is by being someone worth respecting. It's by being someone who's worth respecting. It's if you look in the mirror and you feel like, oh, I, I see nothing but flaws. Understand, are those flaws that you can control? Are those flaws within your control? Or are they just perceived flaws that you're conjuring out of thin air because you're comparing yourself to others? Like a big thing I know for a lot of people is height. Like weight, you can solve weight. If you're a big fat ass and you have bad skin, cut the carbs, cut the sugar, and you will lose weight. If you stop drinking soda and you stop eating a bunch of bread, and you stop eating fast food for every meal, I guarantee you'll lose weight. It, it is not rocket science. But if you're five foot five, or you feel like your bone structure is crap and you don't have a chin or whatever, you have a lazy eye, it's like, okay, bro, well, gym max. You, you can still you can still get in really good shape. You can still make good money. I mean, Jeff Bezos can look like Jeff Bezos. And I guess like, you know, do fairly well in life, then I mean, there's hope for everyone. I mean, look at Ted Cruz. Are you telling me that you can't do better than Ted Cruz? I mean, you're really going to look at Ted Cruz and be like, this man has a wife and a family. And I mean, dude's a serial killer. And he looks like a shoe, but you know, he's still doing great. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't really, a lot of times you, you confuse your insecurities for these objective facts. And yeah, people will, will point out flaws. But nobody is flaw free. Nobody is like a perfect physical specimen. There are people who are attractive, sure, but there's all kinds of traits that come along with them that are very not attractive. It's like the guys who are pickup artists and they don't understand. Yeah, you actually do have to have some sense of, I guess, decorum and personality. You can't just show up with, with a gold chain and an Adidas tracksuit and a Lamborghini that you rented and just pull women based off that. Like you have to be, you have to have riz. You have to have some ability to actually talk and converse with people and have social skills. People forget that aspect. Just be a criminal and love criminals. Exactly. Like I mentioned earlier, attraction is not a choice. My brother, again, with his massive body count, I mean, dude was, I'm talking stained shirt, same pants he's been wearing for days, smells like shit. And he just went after hood rats and got women. It's like attraction is not a choice. It's all these dudes want to pull out these strategies, bro. They want, to, they want to make all of these strategies of how to pull women. And this is why I say be the fisherman, not the hunter. If, when, if a woman's attracted to you, it won't be a choice. Like, again, like I said, I've been a, a, a rejected by chubby four out of tens and then had like a nine out of ten blonde hop on my dick. It's just how things work in life. You can't predict who's going to be attracted to you and who's not going to be attracted to you. This is why, this is why you actually have standards don't settle and understand your worth and try to figure out what your type is, what kind of women you think you'll attract by looking the way you do, and then tailoring your appearance to try to attract the women you actually want to attract. If you're out here trying to attract career, career women, then maybe listen to Kevin Samuels, or maybe you listen to Alpha Mayor Strategies. But if you're just trying to attract a normal, regular female girl, then dude, just like take care of your hygiene, start working out a bit, you know, lose the gut, lose the flabbiness, you know, fill out a little bit, brush your teeth, you know, maybe buy some new clothes or start matching. And you can do a few basic things as a regular ass dude who's broke as shit and start pulling at least a decent amount of interest from women, at least getting women to look at you now. You're not a completely invisible to women. It's not going to mean you're going to be like Tyga and have bitches bouncing on your dick. It's going to mean that suddenly you're not going to be walking into a room and have zero females looking at you. That's all that means. And all it means is that you have some some extra little push up in the dating hierarchy to where you're no longer 
feeling is hopeless. And when you start feeling that confidence, when you start feeling like, oh yeah, you know, I, I'm noticing that I'm losing weight. I'm noticing that I'm filling out. I notice that my skin's clearing up. You know, I'm starting to, you know, I, you dress better and you look in the mirror and you're feeling snazzy. Those are all baby steps towards respecting yourself better. And there's some men who have all of these things and they still don't respect themselves. So you got to think to yourself, ultimately self-respect comes from an understanding of oneself. Dudes who keep running away from their own problems, their own baggage, their own trauma are the people who respect themselves the least. The dudes who I see sim- the most are the dudes raised by single moms or the dudes raised by their sisters or dudes who are completely brainwashed by gynocentric thinking and act in an effeminate manner and think that if they act like a woman around women, that they'll get women. And that's not how it works. Because if you're trying to attract straight women, you'll never get a woman acting like a woman. You gotta act like a man, bro. You gotta, you gotta feel your balls, you gotta feel your cup, and you gotta act decisively and have no shame in your game. So I've laid down all, all 11 of my laws and I'm going to walk through them again. So remember, first law, sin for yourself first. Invest your time, energy, and resources to your own life before doing so for anyone else. So that's rule number one. Sin for yourself first. You should be your own biggest sin. You should be subscribing to your own OnlyFans, giving money to your own Patreon. This is, this is your temple. Before you get to a charity, before you start throwing money at Ukrainian or Palestinian children, before you start giving handouts to random chicks on dating apps, sin for yourself first, brother. Second is self-respect is a prerequisite for others to respect you. Know your boundaries and enforce them. I don't, I'm, if you're a human doormat and you let people walk all over you, you let people push your buttons and shit test you with no consequences, they will not respect you. It doesn't matter if these people are saints or sinners or wherever they come from. It doesn't matter the culture, the nationality. If you don't respect yourself, no one else will. Not a single other person on this planet will respect you if you don't respect yourself. Three is eliminate the double standards. Nigo, equal rights means equal lives. Equal rights, equal rights means equal fights. Women want to be equal with men. Treat them equal to men. Stop pretending we're living in the 1920s and realize we're living in the 2020s. It's a different decade and a different century. In the 20s, we're, we're approaching the mid-20s now. We're not in the aughts. We are not in the knee. We are in the mid-20s. We're in the mid-20s, guys. Stop treating women like some special fairy tale creature. Stop treating women like an endangered species. This bitch is not a northern white rhinoceros. This bitch is not a Bornean orangutan. This is 50% of the population has a vagina. So stop treating this woman as if she's some fairy tale princess and hold her to account for her actions and her deeds and eliminate the double standards. Stop pulling out the red carpet for people who are not celebrities. Four is also know your worth. Understand that as a man, your sexual marketplace value will completely swap with women in their in your 30s. And once women's sexual marketplace value goes away, it's gone forever. A man will peak in his 30s and 40s, both in terms of reproductive output, but also sexual marketplace value, and then plateau in his 50s and start declining in his 60s and 70s. But if even Clint Eastwood is pumping out kids, it's, it's in his 70s. If, if there's guys like Hemsworth and Jason Momoa and, good Lord, it's, you know, name any celebrity, Leo, Leo DiCaprio, pulling, absolutely pulling in, in, their, in their 50s. Like Johnny Depp, pulling, pulling in their 50s. Pulling in their late 40s. Then understand your worth as a man. Understand what happened will be what will happen if you're on your purpose. Their purpose is to be a celebrity. Their purpose is to their drive, their passion is to act or to sing or to dance. Understand what your passion is. Understand what your skill sets are. Understand how you can cultivate yourself and grow yourself into being a similar image of confidence. You're never going to get as many women as a rock star or as a movie star, but you will be able to find that many, many, many women on this planet Earth respect and will be attracted to a man who has a goal, who has a dream and a focus that he approaches. So understand that beauty will fade and pussy is not scarce. Half of one out of two people has a, has a vagina. You are not missing out. Number five is attraction is not a choice. There's nothing you can give a woman that, that will make her fall in love with you. And that barely needs to be said. Again, if she's not into you, she's not into you. Don't wait around. Don't expect her mind to change. Even though women are fickle, 
Don't stay in a friend zone. Don't stay in a platonic relationship if that's not what you want. That'll come up later, but attraction, again, is not a choice that cuts both ways. Don't feel bad about rejecting your girl. Don't feel bad about walking away from somebody who you know isn't right. Understand that attraction is non-negotiable. So don't be trying to give women stuff to make them fall in love with you and won't work. Unless they're a prostitute, unless they're a hoe, it won't make no difference. Number six is literally what I just said. So <laughs> you could be a criminal, but focus on cultivating yourself, not impressing others. Because there's only two rules, today. only two rules. There's one rule for every gender. And that is be attractive, don't be unattractive. There's no strategy, there's no artistry, there's no tips. The only riz you need is being able to hold a conversation about the stuff that you like. If a woman isn't on your wavelength, then forget it. Like if you can't, if you're if you're so socially awkward that you can't hold the conversation without crapping your pants or spilling your spaghetti all over yourself, then dude, work on it. Talk to yourself in a mirror. Work on it. Because again, if you have no social skills, then maybe the girl just think that like, oh, you know, I can work on it. I, I've seen women overlook some ridiculous shit, ridiculous red flags. It's like guys who like literally crushing on my buddy who had Asperger's syndrome. I've seen it. So trust you me. There's very few ways you can genuinely fuck up when a woman is actually sprung on you. Seven is something I mentioned earlier. If a woman is not giving you what you want in your relationship or it isn't heading in the direction you wish, then leave and look for someone more compatible. Don't waste your time with girls who are not right for you. So if you're friend zone and don't want to be friend zone, if you're in a relationship and you have a dead bedroom, your girl haven't slept with you or touched you in a month, if she's being cold on you, if not responding to your text messages, if you think that she's cheating on you, if she's going out to clubs, ladies' nights, and not telling you, you don't owe this bitch a thing. It's, this is, again, unless you have a ring on the finger, unless you have a ring on the finger, then just walk away. Don't waste any more years or months of your life with someone who's not compatible with you when there's guaranteed to be other people compatible for you out there. Don't, don't bullshit yourself into thinking that this person's actually right for you when you know that they're not. And that falls into the eighth law, which is avoiding one-way relationships. You got to have a woman simp for you back. If you're going to be simping for a woman, there should be an equal amount of simping coming back to you. There should be reciprocity in the relationship. If you're trying to initiate sex, she should initiate sex. If you're trying to pay for a meal, she should try paying for a meal. you got to have that give and take. you got to have that tango in a relationship. But if that tango isn't there, if you feel like dealing with this girl is a full-time job, if you feel like all you are is an emotional tampon or a, a blood bag for this woman to suck off of, then she's just a hoe and she's just digging your gold. Don't be, don't be a punk. The ninth, again, I covered this. Fish, don't hunt. Let the woman come to you and reel it in when you get a bite. But let the interested parties come to you first. If you have a worm on your hook, going through all of the energy and effort to go spear fishing, when you're not equipped to do so, it's not going to work. You can try throwing as many rocks as you want into the pond. You can try going out with your with your slingshot. If you're if you're if you're not the the a kind of guy who's attractive enough to get away with just cold approaching women or going on dating apps and getting guaranteed to get a match within a week, then don't bother. Just be the fisherman. Let the women come to you and pull in that reel once you get an interested party. Number 10, definitely. <laughs> Didn't, <laughs> I see you, DZ. Do not stand up for people or defend people. Do not stand up for or defend people that wouldn't do the same for you. Exposing yourself to confrontation with whom you share no allegiances will not benefit you whatsoever. This is general life advice. So these last two, again, are general life advice. Don't defend and put yourself out for people who would not do the same for you. People who are not your friends, who are not your allies. Don't be foolish enough to expose yourself to consequences for those that wouldn't do the same for you. Because all you're going to do is just make yourself, again, a living doormat. 
you're going to be miserable. You're going to let life pass you by because you're spending all this time being pathologically altruistic for people who couldn't care less if you lived or died. And take that as you will. You, you can see that as personal or political or whatever. But that is, that is a, a key aspect of maintaining, maintaining your dignity as a man. And the last one, or, or I guess second to last, because DZ hit us with a fresh one, stay mysterious. Never be an open book and keep them guessing. Predictability will cause women to become comfortable and even confident in the way that they handle you. Never let them think they have you figured out. And again, this doesn't even have to apply to dating. This can just be in life in general. Don't let people think that they have you solved. If they think that they have you solved, they will treat you in whatever way they deem appropriate. If they're like, oh, well, I know that I can use this information, or this information, or based off this, I think that he's this or that. They have a thousand personality tests. People think that they have people figured out all the time. But let me tell you this. There's a lot of serial killers, psychopaths, narcissists out there that have perfectly great lives that do great in life because people are terrible judges of character especially women. Women are the worst judges of character I've ever met. It's so funny how many, how quick women are to li label a man as creepy or dangerous when they have no fucking clue whatsoever what to actually look for in terms of pathological behaviors. That's why the dark triad is so attractive to women. The same traits that you could ostensibly and logically point out as being da potentially dangerous traits is what women will actually go after, which again, just be a criminal. Women love criminals. You could be a convicted felon and be super impulsive, quick to anger, and women will find you attractive because you're a bad boy. But they'll call the dude sweating in the corner a creep because he has a trench coat and a fedora and hasn't shaved. But he's literally bothering nobody. That, that, that's the mind of the modern female. They're more afraid of the dude with a clean criminal record who's just kind of fat and sweaty than they are of the literal convicted felon covered in tattoos. And you, I mean, I'm not, you know, I, again, am I wrong? Like, I, I don't know how, how that's supposed to work out. And then again, of course, DZ is putting in the 12th law. Jerk off before you go to see her. Just check, just check if you want to see her, uh, if you want to be with her post not clarity. You're exceptionally retarded when you're horny. And that, again, is good advice. I sometimes, I like the night before. So I, I like to be at, like, half a tank. I don't want to be... I don't want to be like no fat 30 days and edged and then be like, you know, let me go see this girl. Because again, when you're horny and you just want to smash, you'll not only say stuff and do stuff that's rash and impulsive, which women might like, but you'll, you'll also do some pretty dumb shit. This is why alcohol is such a dangerous drug for men. Because you'll realize you'll spend all this money buying girls drinks and you'll be trying to flex in the club, pouring out your, bo your bottle of, you know, gray goose and realized you spent like $300. Like I went to the strip club for my, for my last birthday, not this birthday, but my last birthday. And I spent like $500, I spent almost a whole check in that, in that strip club. And I didn't even get any action. You know, I just went home even hornier than when I went in and I'm like, this is such a waste of fucking money. So yeah, I think that's, that's a good one to add. Like, you know, jerk off before you see her. I think that, Another, one part one part that makes that a little difficult though is the haze like when you have that like brain fog from when you've just busted a nut you know a shameless self plug but when you have that post nut fog like post nut clarity is followed by post nut fog for me and i don't like the fact that like i don't know i'm i'm in this this nutted stupor so it's got to it's got to be like in the morning like if i have a date at night then like do it in the morning or something you know give yourself a solid 8 to 10 hours to, to clear out the brain frog and kind of recharge your nutsack a little bit. Have you give yourself a little bit of an edge when you go out, but still solid advice. But yeah, guys, I guess this is the, the, the list in the rundown. So as I've mentioned before, my persistent internet issues have been kicking me directly in the nutsack for the last couple of weeks. In fact, right now I'm actually streaming from my phone's hotspot. So I don't know what to do about the internet situation. I might have to find a cafe or something with decent internet. I think it'll be cringe if I'm in Starbucks trying to do this. So I, may, I might just have to go and get my own internet. I might have to go and actually just pay for my own internet because trying to rely on the internet I have now is just not working out. And it's gotten to the point where even in my last stream, those who dropped by, my last stream was a bit of a disaster solely because the connection keeps kept stopping in the middle like it would work fine 
and then suddenly it would drop off. So I'm just glad that this, this stream actually lost to fruition, but yeah, it's, it's been, it's been one hell of a doozy. I'm going to try to use the same strat. It's probably going to, uh, I don't know. It might drain a lot of my data. I don't know how much data I actually have uh, to upload. I'll try to upload using my internet connection. It's just a, if there's any interruption, it'll mess it up. But I'm going to keep trying at it. I'm not going to let a little bit of internet fuckery get in the way of trying to put up content. So, yeah, definitely appreciate everyone who decided to drop by, dropping by. But seriously, let me know what you think about most of these rules. I'm going to drop the Discord invite here because... Yeah, because I think that uh, I'm definitely trying to get more active on Discord. So one thing that I do think is going to be a trend going forward is probably more of this candidate stuff. Like if I can't uh, share my screen effectively anymore, then I, I want to I do something that's a bit more candid and educational to, to space things out. Because that's what I realized too, is I make a lot of content that involves going through articles, going through slides. And I know that some people really do like the visual aspect of that because my, again, my camera is so trash that it's probably better to, to look at that rather than me. But at the same time, I understand that me being a little tiny face at the bottom of the screen, you, uh, you don't get the personal, you don't get the personal touch. So I wanted to actually throw down if I'm doing, keeping on with this series, when it comes to psychology of simping, I do want to, focus in on things that help men get away from simping like not just sitting around shitting on simps but actively doing something that will encourage men who do simp and know that they're simping and feel shame that they're simping but at the same time don't know how to change their ways so just a little bit of a guide to help them kind of cold kind of just build themselves up and get out of it yeah enjoy the tropical beaches and bitches it's it's been honestly it's been a wild ride I gotta say, like romantically, it's been eh. Honestly, like I've I've been hit on by a lot of like milfs and cougars and stuff. But in terms of girls my own age, like I've got a little bit of buzz. But for the most part, like a lot of these girls are on vacation. And dude, I got actively cock blocked last weekend. Like this girl was totally like into me, and then one of her friends is like pulled her aside, like her ugly friend too, pulled her aside. I'm just like, bro, you know what? These hating ass bitches. I almost I almost don't even bother trying to go after tourists anymore. Like, again, I just, I just stick around. Like, I'm just dancing, but these girls come up to me. But they're just tourists. Most of them are just, like, here for, like, a week, and they're not really trying to do anything. So they just they just want to get – they, they want to do to flirt with them, but they're not really going to, like – they're there with their families or something, and they're not actually going to smash. So I've been trying to focus more on, like, trying to get with some local girls. But, again, it's been a slog. A lot of – a lot of like a lot of gay women, like a lot of lesbians. Like I don't know what the hell is up with that. I met a lot of lesbians on this island so far. I feel like I should go to like Oahu or something. But um, but yeah, that's my Discord link. <laughs> I'm gonna try to enjoy uh the the sunshine and the beaches and all that as much as possible. But yeah, avoid the drama, avoid the BS. Like the dating is not something that you should be stressed out about. If you feel like dating is stressing you out, then you, you're caring too much about it. So I just go with the flow. I'm not trying to do too much. But if a woman's interested, again, be the fisherman, man. If you if you think a woman's into you, don't brush her off because you're trying to be alpha. Don't be like, oh yeah, bro, I'm not even gonna look at her because I'm because I'm a big man. I don't I don't I, I can I don't I don't need to do shit. And Drex said there's no such thing as lesbians. I so. I actually agree, but the thing is, is that the juice ain't worth the squeeze. Cause I know for a fact, like one of the people I went with on a trip, I went on a trip this weekend and I know one of the girls definitely was looking at me a lot, like definitely a lot of bisexual women. I think most lesbians are bisexual. When I mean lesbian, I just mean that they're in like a, a relationship or in a, like not a committed relationship necessarily, but definitely more currently inclined towards women. Cause again, women flip flop their sexuality all the time. But it's just not worth it. Like I, I had the opportunity to probably like stay later and hang out with this with this lesbian couple with this other guy, and I thought to myself like, oh man, maybe they would invite me to like some freaky ass foursome or some shit. And then I realized like, dude, they're lesbians. Like they 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 more so than any other women will milk you for the validation they get from male attention, 
and definitely not put out. Like they have no desire, at least at that moment, but they have no desire to sexually put out for men. I think that's what turns a lot of women by is they don't need somebody to dick them down. They don't really have the sexual need to be bred like other women do. They just want the validation and the attention of having somebody there that can be their emotional tampon. And so, and trust me, like after being with women who switched up on me, two different women who switched up on me, uh, this is what I've learned. It's just women who think or realize, oh, I don't need a man. And most of the time, women either become lesbians young or they, they become bi young or don't date women when they're young and then switch up when they're older because they want kids. So they, you know, suddenly wake up and are like, oh, I need a, a man to provide for me or they want to go fucking trad again. Or it's the opposite. They're straight when they're young and then they decide they want to be you know, feral cat ladies. They're with the carousel. And now they're going to be lesbian because they don't want to deal with the, the rig and roll of, of dealing with Joe Schmo. So I, I definitely agree with Drex there. I think that because of how often women will switch up over their life, I don't believe that women are born lesbian or born one way or the other because I've just seen them switch up every single time. I've never met a single woman who was lesbian her entire life. Of virtually zero gold star lesbians. So that should tell you something. The fact that most women who are lesbian have, have lost their virginity to a man is, is pretty telling. But yeah, again, don't, I, I know for me, I know from, from my end, I also don't like hanging out with people who are LGHD TV because it just all comes with a certain set of politics and set of assumptions that I just don't know if I vibe with. And I know it just, it still does kind of repulse me on a basic level. Like I hate to say it, but it does. I just don't, I just don't like fucking with people who are open in their degeneracy, I guess you could say. Like they try to find any excuse in the book to justify being sexually deviant. And trust me guys, I'm the first person to admit when I'm, that I'm a sexual deviant, but it just makes me laugh how much other people cope. Like, you know, you know, when somebody's insecure about something, when they always have to bring up cope. Like, dude, you can just, you can just say, you can admit to being a deviant. If, you, if you're like sniffing panties or taking candid photos of women in the train, you, you meet otakus, where there's no shame in the game. They're, they're going to the Japanese panty vending machine and eating the edible strawberry panties and they don't give a shit. They're like in their business outfit, they're wearing company logos and they still do not give a fiddle or fuck. And then you have other people who are like totally completely trying to find any reason justification thing tens of millions of dollars to try to find a uh, find find a reason to excuse whatever sexual behavior they have and it's just like come on bro like just stop the cap just just admit it you know like you know, most straight men get called perverts all the time just for basically basically being attracted to them like oh you stare at a woman uh, a bit too long and you're labeled a creep or you're labeled a pervert when it's perfectly natural male behavior but God forbid you call someone a pervert because they they like man ass. You know, suddenly now you're a bigot. So it all depends. It's all optics. And yeah, I, I also agree it easy. It's if I was a woman, I'd be lesbian too. I couldn't imagine. I don't know. Like it's just I think that if you're a woman, because it's like as a guy, it's like the the idea of taking a dick is probably where where it gets me. Because like I can hang out with my bros, but Dude, I'm not. I'm not gonna take a dick. Like, I'm not. I'm not gonna put a penis in my mouth. Like, the fuck is that shit? Like, that's that's ugh. Like, I, I just. Eh. But it's. I don't know, bro. At the same time, like, if I feel like the the being feeling like you need to be bred should be any part. Like, it should be a fundamental part part of your brain anatomy. Like, I know that's why some women have like the strap on or whatever. But like, if you don't have that part of your brain where you need to breed. I feel like you're just dysfunctional. Like I feel like there's something fucked about you, but I know a lot of women are, are bisexual. Like that's what it is. It's mostly like bisexual women these days, like girls who they have that, but they want to, I don't know. They want to have their cake and eat it too. They want to have their best friend eat their muff or something like that. They want to like have all the romance and bullshit that comes along with dating a woman because they want to date a woman, but they find those same traits repulsive in men. So it's like, Again, it's a femininity, not femininity. So these women, they want that femininity in their partner, but when they find it in a man, they're repulsed by it. They still want their men to be masculine, but they're also attracted to femininity, so they're with women. Which is why, like, I don't understand the the bisexual dichotomy. I feel like, if anything, it'd be easier to be in a straight relationship with a man 
and then kind of dabble with the lesbian shit because most dudes are down for it. I mean, I think most dudes, like, they would be like, no, no. But it's like, you see your girl making out with another girl at the club. I know that some guys would get upset by that, but I know a lot of guys who just would find that hot. So, I don't know. With bisexual women, it just feels like, why the fuck are you in a bisexual? Why? Like, I, I feel like with the with the girls I hung out with, it's like, you're you're clearly bi- you're both clearly bisexual. You're not completely and utterly gay. So like, why are you like beating yourselves up in a faux relationship and you're not putting a label on what you are? It's like, it seems like you don't know what the fuck you want. Honestly, like most bisexual women just don't know what the fuck they want. Yeah. So girls are very envious. They're really curious as to what having a dick is like. I mean, I, I got to tell you, brother, I don't really, I never, because I like, I like the oral aspect to foreplay, so to speak. And I never really felt like I would like having a vagione. Having a vagione to me would just be a hassle. Like, I don't want to have something that just oozes shit all the time, fucking oozes blood, oozes slime whenever I get aroused. I'm like, you know, getting a boner you can hide that shit that shit just kind of like snakes down your boxers i mean if you're if you're in doubt but like you know even if you're not in doubt that shit just kind of like pushes on your zipper a bit if you're a woman your fucking drawers get soaked like that shit's gross as fuck like i'm I, i'm sorry bro like i've never wanted to have a vagina like just just ugh, just 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 a leaking orifice like that shit sounds fucking disgusting like I, i'm i'm very glad for the women that i know who take care of their shit i think like just like with a dick you can wash it and <laughs> two people drop off but it's like it's just to me i don't know vagine i i i know that some men are curious about it uh but yeah i don't know it, it, it does seem like it would be make make more sense to wonder what it's like to have a dick than to wonder what it's like to have a vagina just because i think with with the idea that it's it's external, you can do shit with it. Like, I can't slap someone in the face with a vagina. But I can definitely slap someone in the face with a penis. Yeah, it's it's basically this. I don't, I don't really see, like, on one hand, I have, like, a pull cue attached to me. And, like, a, a weak spot, you know, a weak button. But I, I don't, again, I think that a lot of men have, they have the autogynophilia, which I think is what a lot of transsexual men have. They have, and again, people, they hate this term. They hate when you break down their fetishes or when you call their, um, whenever you call their take a fetish, they're like, oh, it's not a fetish. It's an orient. It's like, no, 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 dude, you have autogynophilia. You get off on the fact that you're dressed as a woman and look like a woman. It's something that you find sexually arousing. It's like these guys, they say, they're like, some of them have gender dysphoria to the point where, oh, I feel like I'm a woman in a man's body. So I'm going to take all these hormones and then, but I think that almost all of it, just like with cuckolding being like latent male homosexuality or bisexuality, I feel like a lot of the trans, trans individuals are autogynophilic. They just get off from the idea of being or looking like a woman. And to them, it's a sexual, it's a part of their sexual gratification, which you can see very clearly from the fact that they're incredibly over-sexualized. And I point this out to them, like, why are you so over-sexualized? and focus so much of your identity on sex if this isn't something that is based in sex. And it is. It's it's something that's intrinsically tied to your sexuality. And they just don't want to, they don't want to put the correct label on what they're actually feeling. They just, it's like, if it, if it was, if it wasn't so sexually focused, then you wouldn't give a shit how you look or dressed. You would just walk around looking like a normal dude saying, yeah, I, but I'm a chick. But you have to make you have to give all the sexual physical sexual mar- markers of being a woman because again you need to see and feel and reinforce the fact that you're looking and feeling like the typical presentation of a female. So it's it's all that part of psychology. But I do think that for the lesbian, I I think that's much more of it is the attraction to femininity, the urge to associate the feminine with the romantic. And or just having experiences with men that make you think that that isn't a thing. But then most of the time with bisexual women, they just meet the right guy and they flip flop because just because they don't meet the man right now that fits their criteria, pushes their buttons doesn't mean they never will. 
But that's also, again, why I don't fuck with them because it's like, yeah, you, you this, this bisexual girl is not attracted to you. How long is it going to take for her to change her fucking mind and go back to women? Because bisexual women, I've learned the hard way twice now, will flip flop on you and just fucking ditch you like trash and go back to women because they get fed up or they get curious or they meet this other one. It's like I already have enough competition as a man trying to compete with other men, but trying to compete with other women, it's like, how the fuck are you going to do that? So again, bros, that's, that's why I have this list. That's, that's why I have this list. And where is it? Rule number seven. If a woman isn't giving you what you want in your relationship or isn't heading the direction you wish, look for someone more compatible. And this list of rules, dudes, these are all lessons I've had to learn the hard way. Not a single one of these fucking lessons I pulled off of the internet or I got from, you know, looking up a guide somewhere. These are all my rules. These are all things that I had to learn the fucking hard way. Nobody taught me any of this shit. These are all things that I learned from my own fucking dating experience, being a man in his late twenties. This is all shit that I've learned from being in the fucking dating game for a decade. So understand bros that where I'm coming from with these rules and coming from with this series is all based on experience. I, I know what it's like to struggle with this shit. We've all simped. We've all been simps. I don't believe any man on this planet has never had the urge to simp for a woman, especially if he was raised by a single mother or raised in a Western society. You've simped. You've definitely done and violated things pertaining to your self-respect when it comes to women. And I know for me that I've been guilty of that several times. And it's taken a long time for me to come to a place where I respect myself enough to walk away from women that I'm attracted to. Simple as. Now, I'm not going to put out for and give you special treatment just because you're an attractive female. I'm going to treat you the way that your personality dictates. I'm going to treat you the way that respect or reciprocity dictates. And that's just the way it is. That's how it works. That's what, what that's what life's all about. It doesn't matter how you look, fam. It matters how you act. Actions speak louder than appearances. And that's just it. You can say whatever the fuck you want to me, motherfucker. You can look like a bombshell, but if you come at me sideways, I'm going to rip you a new asshole. You'll have another hole that leaks. So, yeah, don't give a shit. This, and this is why I think guys like Andrew Tate, like, they have, I know that some dudes have this message, but they just don't come across with it the right way. They come across way too raw and too savage, but they, they're they saying the right thing. They're saying the thing that me, men need to hear, but they're not saying it in a way that's objective enough for women to hear it and be like, oh, that's fucked. Or that makes sense. But I think any woman could hear and see this list and understand, oh yeah, that makes sense. But of course you're going to find hordes and scouts of women that think that this is some insult to your bullshit. When every single rule of this comes from a dating experience or comes from a woman I dated, which is probably the funniest thing about putting out this kind of content is the amount of women who think that this kind of shit is incel talk or talk of dudes who don't get bitches when this is exactly what you'll figure out if you actually start getting bitches. The, the time where I was the biggest simp in my life, where I was the most about respecting women and all this other shit that they say was actually when I got zero pussy. When I got zero pussy, I didn't believe in a single bit of this shit. When I was getting zero pussy, I was putting women on a pedestal, I was treating women like some fucking fairy tale species, bro. I, I was treating these bitches like Bengal tigers and Amur leopards. I was treating them like they were on the IUCN red list. I was treating every woman like they were a queen. But when I started actually fucking bitches and getting in relationships, I realized these hoes ain't worth shit. These, these hoes are not worth shit. There's, there's, a, there's billions of women, bro. There's almost 4 billion women on this planet Earth. And you're over here wasting your fucking time with some random dumb bitch who does not give a shit about you. So, yeah. Join my Discord. Join my Discord. We can bitch more about women. But I want... It, the reason I made this list, and I'm going to add to it, of course. I want to expand it. I want to want to add more strategies to it. Pitch some ideas. Pitch some scenarios. You know, one of the things I want to do is set up skits of of situations that men are going through hunt for situations men are going through on social media uh everything from x to reddit just figuring out like you know situations men find themselves in, how to react to them uh so this is this is where it's kind of going to go from here is is we're going to get to the rehabilitation arc for sims not just the shitting on sims part not just shitting on women not not you know oh my misogyny my incel talk but actually targeting 
the behaviors that are pathological simping that break men down, that leave them dried out husks, that leave them bitter and sore and helping them ease their way out of the blue pill without being turbo red pill raged like so many dudes I'm seeing walking around today. Giving up on dating and walking away is not the answer. I know a lot of MGTOW dudes don't want to hear that shit. If you're MGTOW, you've been divorced three times, your wife raped your kids and stole your wallet, you know, it's, it is what it is, bros. It is what it is. But if, if you're here and you're still kissing hands and shaking babies and you're still going about the rigmarole and you're expecting different results when you're giving women money for their only fans and you're buying women meals and you're going out on expensive dates and you're not going anywhere. You feel like you're getting played. And now you're going and you're watching Andrew Tate and you're watching Griffin mind and you're watching uh, alpha male strategies and you're watching Manosphere content on the daily. It's like dudes, even these guys are trying to get you away from the red pill rage phase. There's a lot of guys who feed on that shit. They really do like come together and they're like, oh yeah, you fucking women, they, they're fucking whores. They all want to ride the cock carousel. Oh, and it's like one hand, there's a kernel of truth to a lot of that shit. But realize, look in the mirror and understand that you have, to, not every woman is a whore. You know, not every woman is, you know, all women are like this. Basically all the all Walt law is, is there. It's a box. There's always going to be that overlap in the Venn diagram. Don't get me wrong, but there are decent women out there. There are women who are your type. There are women who won't cheat on you. There are women who won't be trifling. There's women who won't play a bunch of fucking stupid ass games, but you have to respect yourself first because even a woman who won't play games will start playing games. If you don't respect yourself and respect your boundaries, even a woman who won't cheat on you and won't be trifling, will start sniffing around. If you don't enforce your boundaries, if you don't grow a fucking pair of balls, and sit up for yourself. Women are fickle, but women can be put in line. Men can be trained, and women can be controlled. And people don't want to hear that shit. Men can be trained and conditioned, but so can women. That's just how it is. That's how people are. In a relationship, there's always that give and take. And if you allow women to get away with shit, then they will get away with shit. If you allow them to shit test you, and you don't do anything about it, then they're just going to keep pushing and pushing and pushing until they have a mile long leash until they're essentially free range doing whatever the fuck they want to do. Next thing you're going to know, she's going to be posting pics of herself with other men catching BBC in Jamaica on her only fans. And you're going to be at home like, Oh yes, dear. Thanks for bringing home the bread. I, I, I have, I have dinner on for when our anniversary is over. You, you, you see these horror stories of dudes who don't get any pussy for six months or they're married. Their wife has a kid they don't touch them ever again, not even a peck on the cheek or women who sit around all day, don't cook a single meal, don't clean. They just lounge around. They need max. They gain 50 fucking pounds. They're not even married. And they're just, it's like, I, I read and I see horror stories from men and I don't feel sorry for a single one of them because every single one of these guys lets themselves be used like a human doormat. Don't be these guys. Don't let yourself simp your way into being miserable. It's not just a matter of holding a door open for a woman or paying for a meal on a date. It's a slippery slope to losing all self-respect. It's a slippery slope to leading a miserable, horrible life, to losing half of your assets in a divorce court, having kids with somebody who hates you, losing years of your life pursuing and chasing people who don't get a squirt of piss whether you live or die. Don't waste that time. Don't use up that energy. There's only one trip you get around this sun. Only one chance you get at this life. Do not waste it going after people, investing in people, being around people who only want to tear you down. Women are too much of a hassle for me when you're in a relationship. They tend to keep you busy with pointless tasks because apparently you're not a man unless you're busy doing that. And so much more importantly is that women want to be the center of everything in your life. It's, it's no longer about you. It's about them. And too many guys get themselves in relationships with people who are like that. What men refuse to do in the modern day is make their women have some sort of ability 
to the best from their ego. They, they get with egotistical people who want to make everything about them. Your, what is, what is, what's yours is mine. And what's mine is also mine. They're with people like that, but expect them suddenly to be generous because they're in a relationship. If you're not with somebody who's not willing, and this is why I have this rule up here. This is why I have this. Is, this is rule number eight. This is already these rules in action. Avoid one-way relationships. Don't be with somebody who's not going to invest in you, bro. I, I, like this is why get get a fucking passport. Don't be with don't be with women, especially these women in the West who want to make everything about them, where the relationship is purely for their convenience. This is why again, like I, I was mentioning with these bisexual women, don't fuck with bisexual women, because your relationship is solely out of convenience. The moment they get the itch for a more feminine flavor, they're going to ditch your ass for, for some chick they met on, on fucking Hinge or something. Don't do it. Don't get into a one-way relationship. That, that's one of the worst ways you can actually simp. It isn't buying a meal or opening a door. It's getting into a relationship that's completely one-way and completely transactional. It's the worst way you can be a simp. Dudes act like they get a drop of pussy and they're not simping. Bitch, please. You are not whipped. You're, you're just you're just simping. You're not cupcaking. You're doing the simp walk. You're keeping that simp hand strong. And it is hard out here for a simp. Got to pay money for her rent, and the Cadillac gas money spent. That is you. You are you are financing a bitch's life, and getting very little out of it besides a drop of pussy now and then. Dudes are getting pussy once a week, sometimes only once a month, sometimes never and paying an, a, a woman's way through life like a second father. So yeah, dude, this kind of shit, fuck that. Fuck that shit. Dude, this is why you got to create boundaries. You got you to gotta crack the whip. You got to go full fucking Gilead on some of these hoes. And if they don't want to stick around, then fine. Again, leave. But if you're not willing to, if, I, if I'm working all day and you're not willing to cook a meal or clean a room because you're a feminist and you're a proud independent woman and you're a queen and you're going to slay, then you can, you can slay those dishes. You can slay me a fucking sandwich, you know, like you can, you can fucking slay these, this laundry pile, but you won't fucking do that. You're, you're not going to yas queen me into, into having some fucking bum just sit around a glorified fucking roommate that I can ejaculate in every once in a while. That's, that's pointless. It's fucking pointless. Again, at that point, just hire a prostitute or get a fucking doll. Technology has advanced to the point where it's like, your average flashlight or VR set is going to basically give you just as good of an orgasm as this girl is. But it's like, at least my fucking VR headset isn't nagging and bitching at me to go visit the in-laws on the holidays. My fucking VR headset isn't trying to encourage me to get an even better gift for her anniversary this year. And again, guys, only when I started dating women, did I start thinking this way? It, I was the world. I was just as blue pilled and simping as any dude else before I got, I, before I started dating women. But at the moment I started dealing with th this kind of bullshit and understanding what the game was, that's when I actually started realizing, damn, I need to have some fucking self-respect. Only through hard dating experience did I learn these lessons. So people who want to come here retroactively and talk shit, talk about, oh, he gets no bitches. Oh, he, 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 he doesn't, you know, he needs to actually talk to a woman. Bros, if anybody here if anybody on this website, I don't give a fuck if I get like, I have a hundred fucking subs and get 30 views per video. Me more so than anyone else on this fucking website. I can tell you as a broke ass dude who is not a Kevin Samuels, who works 40 hours a week, just a regular ass bro in the mid twenties, getting into the mid twenties, just a regular ass dude. This is the way. Self-respect over all else. Love yourself more than any bitch on this earth. When you look in the mirror, you should get hard. Do not, do not love any woman more than yourself. There's not a woman, there's not a female human being on this planet you should feel for more than yourself. Fuck this anti-ego bullshit. Fuck this, you gotta lower your... No, 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 no. You should love yourself, bro. You should... You should be a borderline narcissist, like general, like, like the fucking legend looking in the well and falling in love with the, your reflection. You should have that level of love for yourself before you ever try 
to go for a bitch. Because if she rejects you, how will your self-esteem recover? If you feel like, oh man, I hope this girl likes me, fuck that shit. You can't have that mindset. You got to be like, I'm the shit. I've been the shit. I don't care if I have 20 bucks in my pocket. I don't care if my all my clothes are from Goodwill. I don't care if I got this fit from Ross Dress for Less. I, I don't care if my fucking, I have, I have a club foot and a lazy eye and, and a weak jaw. I don't give a shit about that. If she is not fucking with me, then fuck her. That's the attitude you got to fucking have when it comes to dating. If women are too much of a hassle, then fuck them. If a woman's only going to spend your money, then fuck it. But not all women are like that. What this does is it automatically deselects all of these bitches who don't fit your criteria, and it highlights the women that do. If you're not trying to fuck with bitches who are transactional, then when a woman does come into your life that's trying to sugar mama you, who's cooking you a meal, like, oh, don't worry, honey, I'll pay for the day. And you're like, damn, son. You wouldn't get that. How would you find that sugar mama if you're currently in a six month relationship with a bitch costing you a bunch of money? Hell no. You're not. If you weren't single, that wouldn't have happened. But dudes will spend years and years of some of the best years of their lives with women that are not compatible for them, lose out on all these other women. Because again, it's not called an abundance mindset because you're coping. It's literally half the population has a vagina. Understand that there is no scarcity of women in Western society. We are not living in China where there's three dudes for every chick. There's one dude for every dude. There's a chick for every dude. And only because of hypergamy, we haven't paired off. So you've got to compete. But there's no lack of women. It's the same. There's a, there's, a, there's a woman for every man. You just got to fucking play those numbers. Because most of these women are still trying to chase the same 10 dudes. Or they're lesbian or bi or whatever the fuck. You know, like shit's fucked. But you can still eliminate the riffraff by not settling, by respecting yourself, knowing your boundaries, and not being a bitch made, man, man, poon, simp. So, yeah, just don't give a shit. Honestly, like, he who cares least wins. The less you care, the more you're going to mentally be able to bounce back and recover from dealing with the shit that you have to deal with in the modern day. The less you care, the better. It's good to have a sober, clean way of thinking about things, but at the same time, giving too much of a fuck about what women think or what women do or whatever, pointless. Just go about your day, go about your life. And if you're spending that much time focusing on a woman, that means that that's time that you could spend, I don't know, making money or working out. Like, dude, fucking hell, just even jerking off is a better use of your time than wondering what a woman thinks about you. There's, there's less... I, I, I mean, I could, I would rather watch dog videos on Instagram than give a shit about what a woman thinks about I me. Mean, it's a, it's a waste of time. It's a waste of time. Like this whole wondering about like, oh, some shit that I said, it's, it's all bitch made thinking. You can't give a fuck. If, if you said something embarrassing, did something embarrassing, if you fucked up a shot, oh well. Nobody fucking cares. Even if people didn't forget, it's like most people forget until they're reminded of something. And even if they do remember, bro, like, who fucking cares? Like, these people don't give a shit about you. So who cares? Woman goes over, she rejects you, she calls you creepy. Like, they always say like, the worst thing they can say is no, and that's not true. They can say a million other things that'll try to tear you down. But those women are cruel, and they're assholes. Like, you, eh, eh. And it makes you want to fucking slap the shit out of them. It's like, bro, you, you again, equal rights means equal left. So it's like, you, you, you have every right that a man has... You can get punched in the face too. But again, and that's one thing too, is like the female ego. The female ego is insane. I've met some egotistical motherfucking females in these last couple of years, fam. Trust you me. The, the, the egos of the modern Western women are insane. They get they think they can say the most heinous out-of-pocket shit to men with no consequences. Like, bitch, you're like you're not getting suplex for saying the kind of shit that you say to me. But again, I think a lot of dudes, this is why simping is so terrible. It's because so many simps exist that women expect bitch-made behavior as being the default for men. That if you're not acting like a bitch-made simp, then, oh, you're, it's like what I said just now about loving yourself more than any woman, that's considered narcissism. They slap all these is isms and phobes on everything now. If a bitch ever calls you an is or an ism or a phobe, ditch that bitch. Ditch that bitch immediately. That All that shit is some gaslighting bullshit. Never let a bitch label you, bro. If you ever have anybody, 
man, woman, child, if anybody tries to put a label on you, fucking ditch him, man. Like, don't fuck with that shit. Don't let anybody ever put a label on you. That is one of the clearest, like, boundaries you should be drawing for yourself as a man. When I talk about making boundaries, when I talk about, like, setting up boundaries, that is one of the first boundaries, bro. First boundaries that you need to set up. So, like, where is it? Where, where is it? It's, it's, it's on one of these. So, eliminate. So, if, um, if this person was a man, so let's say this woman says some shit to you. If it was a man saying that shit to you at a bar, would you beat his ass? And this is where a lot of people are like the Chris Brown, Rihanna thing, like, oh, you know, never hit him. Well, like, first and foremost, Chris Brown's been beating on women for years. And nobody gives a shit. Again, the dark triad traits, Chris Brown, he can sing well, but he'll give you a fucking right hook. Like that, that sweaty dude on the bus will never hit you. Will never will never lay a finger on you. But yet you view him as more dangerous than Chris Brown, who will literally beat the brakes off you till you're black and blue. He'll 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 put your taste buds in orbit and your teeth in the gutter. And yet you're gonna you're gonna fawn over Chris Brown and you're like oh. Cause I'm so sick of love song. The moment he sings that shit, it's like, it's all good in the hood. I catch, I catch a, I catch a right hook. I probably deserved it, kind of shit. You know, pathological as fuck, but that's just how it is. This is a nigga who does not care. He doesn't care. He's still getting pussy. Chris Brown is getting more pussy than you or me, right now. Despite publicly being, a, be, being publicly domestically abusive, he is still getting to this day. Hordes and he's probably getting pussy right now while I'm live streaming this shit. He's probably getting his dick sucked by three different women. Probably going to beat the shit out of all three of them if they say some out of pocket shit. Because what? Because he has boundaries. He's not going to let a bitch talk to him a certain way. He has that pimp hand strong, not that simp hand strong. This is what simps don't get. It's why the nice guys finish last. Because women are all this. Bruh, they don't actually fucking know what they want in 90% of circumstances. They let their basic emotions dictate all of their actions. This is why they're terrible fucking judges of character when it comes to men. This is why they keep bitching about, oh, men are shit and men are nee nee nee. I hear this from women all the fucking time. But they don't, but it's all talk. It's all hot fucking air because at the end of the day, they still know what they, they still like what they like. There's still traits that are fundamentally attractive to women that they just can't ignore because they feel a certain way. Their biology dictates it. This is the, it's, it's, it's some shit that just makes me laugh when dudes unironically give that much of a fuck about what women think. When you can literally be a serial domestic abuser or a fucking convicted criminal with a rap sheet longer than my leg and still pull multiple bitches at the same time when you see this shit in action when you see that the dudes who are getting these women can do whatever the fuck they want these women don't care because they have status because they have money why would you continue to give a shit what women think why would you continue to let women treat you this way it's like again like rules like like beta bucks and chad fucks it's like you they'll make rules for a beta They'll break that for an alpha type of shit. Like they always bring up that dichotomy. What it really is, is this man knows his worth. This man has fucking boundaries. You don't get to talk to me a certain way. You don't get to bring sh certain shit up. You don't get to use things in my past as ammunition. You don't get to you know, talk, like look at like, you know, get all confrontational and shit. You're going to get put in your fucking place. This man respects himself enough and knows his worth enough. To beat the shit out of a bitch if she if she comes if if she comes at him foul. That's some typical pimp shit. Chris Brown did not invent this. This has been typical pimp and shit for a very long time. And why is pimping the world's oldest profession? Because prostitution is not the oldest profession. Pimping is the oldest profession. Since there have been women prostituting themselves, there has been a there has been pimps that control that shit. No woman has ever been able to prostitute herself without a pimp. Pimps have existed since caveman times. There, there was Grug wielding a club 
keep keeping these bitches in line since the very dawn of civilization. There has never been a time in history where prostitution was just free reign. Women can do whatever they want. There was always a man controlling that shit from the very beginning. And why is because there are men out there who have the ability to train and condition women to be the type of women that they want them to be. In this case, ones that sleep around with other men for money. Other cases, ones that make the home and have their kids. But we live in a society of weak fucking men who are bitch made, who roll over like dogs wherever the fuck women feel or think and don't understand that they hold the power in the relationship, that they hold the worth. Because in 10 to 15 years, they're going to be up here in terms of sexual marketplace value and their girl, even if she's fresh out of high school at 18, is going to be down here. If you're 25, 15 years from now, you're 40 and you're killing shit. If you're a bitch at 18, 15 years later, you're going to be, what, in your early 30s and not worth shit. So you're literally offset by seven fucking years. She's seven years younger than you, yet 15 years later, you're at the peak of your fucking manhood. And 15 years later, she's barely able to have fucking kids. That's nature. That's human nature. That's human society. And people are so fucking caught up in all this pleasing women rolling over sycophantic bullshit that they forget that the red pill is nothing more than the fucking truth. It does not mean hate women. It does not mean loathe women. It does not mean walk away from women. It means understand these bitches. Don't apologize and don't be groveling on your knees trying to please, oh, I'm offended by the fact that you're saying these things about women. Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> it's not me. It's not me that ignores pathological traits in men and continues to fucking date them. It's not me jumping on a million fucking dicks in college and then getting out in your 30s and wondering where all the good men have gone. It's not me who delays having children and delays forming meaningful bonds so I can go fucking have fun. It's not me doing any of that shit. It's women doing all of this shit. And yet women don't want to be held accountable for a single fucking thing ever because accountability is anathema to these cunts. And it's true. And you pull out the C words, you pull out the insults, you can call men whatever the fuck you want to call men. You can call men dogs, you can shit on men all day. But God forbid I put a little bit of slant on this shit and tell men, you got to control your bitches. you got to condition women. you got to enforce your boundaries. you got to respect yourself and love yourself first before you love and respect her. That's suddenly pathological. That's suddenly narcissistic. That's suddenly misogynist. That's suddenly sexist. And you can, that's why men need to stop giving a fuck about what women think when it comes to this shit. When it comes to men being men, men respecting and loving themselves, men understanding where they should place their boundaries, where they should put up walls, where they should reveal their hand or not. That is not anything where a woman needs to be providing fucking input. Nobody gives a fuck what you think, bro. Nobody cares. You having a vagina does not make you fucking special. And this is very true, DZ. Women should be at the bottom of your priority list. Even your dog should be higher up on the totem pole. Your dog will defend you. Your dog will fight to the death. Even if your dog doesn't, your dog's going to always be there for you till the day it dies. You can't say the same thing about a woman. A woman, a woman, so DZ, the reason a woman should be at the bottom of your priority list is because you're at the bottom of hers. You're at the bottom of hers. She's going to go live her fucking life any way that she wants, especially these Western women. They're up here. They might say, oh, you're, they're up here, bro. They're, they place themselves at the top. Women love and respect themselves more than anybody else in the world. More so than their fucking parents and family. They place themselves right up here. They will kill their unborn children in the fucking womb. Because the idea of placing anything or anybody else above them is anathema. They refuse to apologize. They refuse to hold themselves accountable for anything. Because again, they're right up here. They're at the very tippy fucking top of this, of this totem pole. So why the fuck are you getting in line with her? As a man, she should get in line with you. She should be able to lower her ego enough to where you're at least on an equal playing field. 
And if she's not even willing to do that, then fuck that bitch. Don't even have her in your life. What are you even doing hanging out with a girl like that? Somebody whose ego is so fucking inflated, they can't even bring themselves down to your level. Somebody who all they can bring to the table is genitals. Something that isn't even a rare commodity. Just because you look a certain way, you think you can get away with being an egregious, heinous motherfucker. And then turn this shit around and act like men are the ones with the problems. Just because I'm saying some mean words and holding you accountable for your fucking actions. We have a, a, literally in a society where bitches are killing their unborn fetuses, their unborn fucking children, sleeping around with a bunch of fucking strangers, getting all this shit fucking permanently etched onto their skin, taking all kinds of fucking drugs, having all kinds of mental fucking illnesses, doing all kinds of crazy deranged shit. But you don't say a single fucking thing about it. Say a single fucking thing. And they, as a group, as a collective, will shit on you and call you all manner of names. They'll shame you. They'll, all of this shit. But they know deep fucking down that they're fucked. Western women are fucked in the head. This is why so many dudes are going after fucking trannies and foreign women. This is why people are buying fucking sex dolls and fleshlights and fucking machines by the hundreds. Shit, that, that industry is exploding. Because people would rather come in fucking silicone than deal with one of these bio holes that spend all fucking day acting like degenerate, useless pieces of shit, and yet it's still expecting the world. Like when people talk about the lazy zoomer, the lazy millennial. Yeah, there's dudes who stay home all day, smoke weed, play video games. Cool. Whatever. That dude is not going to spend a fraction of the amount of money as a meat female living the same lifestyle. You want to know why? Because she's still going to want to buy shit. She's still going to want to go places. She's still going to want to do, do things go out to clubs and drink and do all this other shit. A dude staying home smoking and playing video games is going to cost his parents maybe, I don't know, $500 a month. Based on utilities and groceries, maybe. A female in the same situation is going to cost their parents three times as much, maybe $1,500 a month if they're lucky. Run up all their fucking credit cards, eat up all their fucking food. Do all kinds of crazy dumb shit. Go out on the weekends. All that. And it's, and it's, and it's insane because they don't give a fuck. Their highest priority in life is them and themselves. And this is the kind of mindset you have to have. If women are going to place themselves at the top and show that by the way they vote and the way they act, that they're the number one, this is why they find it to be so fucking anathema when you as a man call them out on shit and say that, no, 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 we should be number one. The fact that they're unable to even level themselves with a man. And be like, we should be on an equal playing field. A man should take priority in your life over yourself. They'll do that. If you can, if you, if men will do this for fucking animals. Like you said, your dog, your laundry, your work. You place all of these things in higher up. And a woman will give a shit more about her fucking college degree and her job. Because, again, these are personal sources of income, whatever. It's like she'll, it's, she'll talk to you. Like, like, try, like, she'll talk to her boss 10 times more respectfully than she will ever talk to you. Her boss that has her training and condition to not talk to her a certain way, but you don't. So, like, her boss can tell her, oh, I need you to be here, here, and here at this time. And she's like, okay. You try to do the same shit to her, and she's like, who the fuck do you think you are? This is how bitch made modern Western modern Western men are. And if you want to have a good fucking example of places that aren't like this, just go literally any fucking where else in the world. Go to Africa. Go to Southeast Asia. Go to the Middle East. And you will find a plethora. Entire societies full of men and women. Where women, you, men are like, okay, I need you to be here, 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 and we're going to go there. And they're like, okay, yes, dear. Pull that same shit here. Like, oh, he's a fucking misogynist and a narcissist. Pull out all their ists and fucking isms that they get from their fucking therapist. Only in Western society are men psyoped into thinking that these garbage ass egotistical fucking women are worth even listening to. Men unironically listen to these fucking labels and give a shit about what these women actually have to think about them. And I find that to be utterly fucking pathetic. I've had several women in my life call me all kinds of shit. They, they call me all kinds of shit. They say all kinds of shit to me. And you know what I do? I call them out on their bullshit. For, for having the audacity of calling them on their bullshit or holding them responsible for their actions, I get labeled. 
I get uh, attempts to shame, attempts to shift blame, and it's all so fucking obvious. Because again, you remove that veneer of sexuality, of that femininity, if you pretend that she's fucking shake from Aqua Teen Hunger Force, would you, would you let some random ass nigga talk to you this way? Fuck no. But you'll let a bitch talk to you this way just because she has some titties or an ass or a somewhat pretty face. So you'll let a pretty face talk to you and punk you. It's like some, some dude who's six foot tall. You wouldn't, you wouldn't, like, dude has a fucking whole head on you, has wider shoulders than you, is buffer than you. You still wouldn't let this dude talk to you this way. But you'll let a bitch who's literally smaller than you, who just because she has a pretty face, she can say whatever the fuck comes out of her, whatever comes to mind, she can just say it to you and you're going to let her get away with it. Why? Why should I let you talk to me any sort of way with no consequence? Now, I'm not Chris Brown. I'm not going to punch you in the face. Give me one reason why I shouldn't cuss you the fuck out. Or call you out on your bullshit at least. Give me one reason why. Give me one reason why you're above responsibility. Give me one reason why you should be allowed to cross my boundaries and step on my toes toes or insult me or say whatever the fuck. But give me a reason. Give me a reason why you should be exempt from this shit when all these other people are. Why should I give you this leeway just for being a woman? What about being a woman makes you immune from ownership and accountability. What about being the one makes you immune from consequences for your words and actions? But so few men embrace this shit. So few men actually sit down and think, oh man, is being a woman make really make them special? Does you do you suddenly deserve special privilege just for being born female? You don't. You have to just you have to show that you're worthy of being listened to. But if all you do is act like a fucking degenerate and you don't provide shit, you're not giving me shit, you're not bringing anything to the table, you're not even here to really be for here for me or with me, you just want shit from me, then why should I tolerate your bullshit? What, because you have a vagina? Congratulations, so does half of everybody on planet fucking Earth. This is the attitude men need to have. You got to stop being a simp and start being a pimp for real shit's been said before but nobody's had the fucking balls to just like hold somebody by the face and just be like son you need to stop being a fucking bitch made simp mangina as they say stop being a bitch made simp stop giving people shit for free stop letting people use you like a fucking walking atm Stop leading with your wallet. Stop chasing women. Stop giving out fucking roses and compliments and doing shit for people who don't appreciate you, who don't care about you, and who place themselves at the top of their own fucking totem pole and will continue to do so for the rest of their lives. You're missing out on all this love, all this adventure, and all this romance, and you're tarnishing and tainting your view of women and your view of relationships because you continue to engage with toxic, egotistical ass people. All of these men walking away from relationships and walking away from marriage solely because of entertaining bullshit from toxic bitches. The moment a bitch shows you her true colors, the moment a bitch starts to be trifling and fuck with you, walk away. That's when you should go make toe. That's when you should fucking take that red pill and start being a fucking savage. When you notice that bitch is starting to treat you with disrespect, starting to treat you with contempt or just having her ego show, showing that she's not mature enough to take accountability for shit, not, not able to control her actions or control her emotions, someone who themselves acts impulsively. You don't have to be the bitch sucking Chris Brown's dick. You can, you can be the man that notices that this bitch is pathological. You don't have to overlook red flags in women just because you're lonely, just because you want to, you know, cream inside her or have a decent orgasm. No amount of sex is worth dealing with people who don't respect you. So that's why, guys, you, you, you got to really look at your own life. You got to make a list like this for yourself. Look at the list that I wrote down. I'm not saying take notes. I'm not a relationship guru. I'm not a relationship expert. But look at the things in your life that are in your control. Look at the things in your life that you can change. Things that you know 
even baby steps, whether it's a hobby that you've ditched, whether it's your physique, whether it's a skill that you've put off, whether it's just a goal you're trying to attain now and you're wondering if it's worth it. Think about these things. Think about ways you can cultivate your own self where you can get better mentally, spiritually, and physically. How are these things going to put you ahead? Really take a sober, hard look at your life and think about things that you can make a difference of right now. It doesn't have to be drastic. It could be as simple as realizing you want to work in a certain field. It could be as simple as like wanting to wanting to be in a certain place or wanting to engage with a certain community. It doesn't matter whether it's reconnecting with family, whether it's discovering a love for knitting or some shit like that, opening up an online clothes shop, selling liquor off the side of the road. It doesn't matter. But look at something where you can invest in yourself. What, where can you start simping for yourself? What is something you can do right now where you can simp for yourself? Because a lot of women will try to convince you that you should simp for them, that you should spend all of your hard-earned money supporting their fucking lifestyle. Don't be that guy. If a woman isn't rocking with you, if she will not lower herself off of her own damn pedestal, don't waste your time. If she's on a pedestal and you're on a walkway, then just keep on fucking walking. If she won't come down to your level, bruh, keep it moving. Don't stop for her unless she stands in your path. If she's up there on a fucking pedestal telling you to stop, don't give a fuck. doesn't matter how loud that megaphone is. doesn't matter how many women turn and point and say, yeah, you should, you should look up. You should stop right now. Just cause if she's not willing to get down onto your level, she's not willing to stop in the path and block your way and look you in the eye. Don't fucking stop. That's when you should keep it pushing. That's when the fishermen should keep the lure. Doesn't matter how many fish are jumping in the pond. You don't wade out to the pond trying to catch a jumping fish. Just keep your reel, keep your lure in the fucking water, sit down, wait for a bite, and reel that shit in when it does. No fisherman who's sane jumps into a river just because the fish are jumping too. Don't pedestalize women. Don't let women who pedestalize themselves think that men should act a certain way or they're a label. They're an incel. They're a misogynist. They're a sexist. They're a chauvinist just because they won't march to the beat of their drum. They'll call you every fucking name in the book because you have the balls to put yourself first in your own life. That's what we've come to in the West, where just being a man on your own terms makes you some sort of pathological asshole. And when the PSYOP gets that deep, the best thing you can do is just stop listening to these bitches altogether. Evaluate your own life and become your own number one simp. See so yeah, guys. I think that would be good enough. About two and a half hours for that. But, yeah, I'm not telling you to go out and be a pickup artist or anything. But definitely keep yourself on the radar. If, if a woman is out there for you, if you will get lucky one of these days, don't, don't ever think that it's over. It's only over if you let it be over. And if you don't give a shit about women or dating, then better for you, too. It's, it's not for everyone. I don't think everyone's ready for a relationship. I don't think many people in, are in a place in their life where they really want to deal with a relationship. And I understand that in the West, everything's so fucking transactional that if you're not making enough money to support another woman, it's like basically it's like adopting a fucking child these days. You got to pay a bitch's whole fucking way. Again, it's like they can shirk off all their traditional gender roles. They can be covered in tattoos and be taking birth control since they were 15. Fucked a double digit number of men drink and smoke and do carry on do whatever the fuck they want and they expect you to, to put out and I, i'm i'm talking to a girl right now who's way who's legitimately trad and those women exist they exist even in their early fucking 20s women who don't drink and smoke and don't have tattoos none of the exes i've ever dated had tattoos just know how to vet women just because just a woman walks along and thinks that she should be the number one person in your life, you should be having one eye. Just keep it pushing, bro. There's no, there, again, there's no scarcity of women. All this hypergamy shit 
confuses men because there's there's an equal number of women. It's like, yeah, she might think she deserves a nine. She might think she deserves that nigga on a dating app. And if she ignores you to go after that dude, then she's a fucking idiot. And she's going to end up with 10 cats and a box of wine. But there's many, many women who aren't participating in hypergamous behavior. You just got to find them. They're out there in the fucking wild. You just got to get their firstest with the mostest. A lot of these bitches are already be in relationships. But it's just a numbers game. Like when he comes to 4 billion people, the amount of fucking RNG when it comes to stats, you're going to find somebody who's, who's right for you. Not just the one person. You're going to find several people. I've, I've been with eight different women from various backgrounds and they've all been my type. They've all been on my fucking wavelength. And even if you're a guy who like, I only date blondes that are like between five foot four and five foot nine. And have blue eyes. I'm like, you can be one of those fucking guys. I know dudes who who have very specific tastes and preferences in women and still manage to find and bag women just because they're willing to run the numbers. Because they don't even fuck with the bitches who don't meet their criteria. Like, oh, you're kind of too brunette for me. And women are just as fickle. Women don't give a shit. So it's like, if women have no shame in their game in terms of the guys they're attracted to, then why do you give a fuck? That's the thing to keep in mind, guys. So... Yeah, I'm glad that my internet lasted this long. Uh, I'm actually genuinely impressed. This might be the way to go moving forward. But it's been it's been insane. Uh, nice two and a half hour stream to make up for my absence in the last week. But yeah, I guess up next, I mean, I don't know how the fuck I'm going to do a uh, critique through history with this setup. So I'm going to have to be inventive for my next stream. But... I hope you guys can digest this again. Give me some, give me some commentary on, uh, on this list. Like I'm going to make some community posts in the future for it, but, uh, yeah, feel free to join the discord. Here is the link right sure. So jo join the discord. Uh, I'll be trying to be more active there, especially as I try to chug through a lot of my issues. But besides that, guys, I really appreciate those who dropped by or stuck around coming here, listening to my brainstorming. I found this is kind of what I meant last time by trying to integrate my own personal experiences without sharing too much of my experiences. But I'm always willing to share. And again, guys, these rules did not come up because I browse 4chan all day or get super rage pilled from random creators these are this is a list i created by myself from my own dating experiences every single one of these rules is a hard lesson learned and i know that there's more i can expand to it but really just like 001 put in the dc it ultimately boils down to self-respect it ultimately boils down to knowing to put yourself as number one in your own life as men in western society we're expected to serve in all aspects. We're expected to serve in times of war. We're expected to be productive members of society. We're expected to bust our asses for, for, for an employer or a corporation, and that's cucked. We, we, we as men have been conditioned and trained to adopt beta bitch cucked thinking when it comes to living your own life. We're not encouraged to start our own businesses. We're encouraged to just follow the beat of a drum. We're encouraged to finance this woman's lifestyle and go through all of the jump through all these fucking hoops. And if you jump through all the hoops society wants you to jump through and you become the perfect image of, of a male citizen, you will be a miserable motherfucker. You will be a miserable, lonely motherfucker. You will be in a, a horrible marriage to some ran through college roasty who's modern, doesn't give a shit about you. who will divorce you after five to eight years. Take your fucking kids. I've seen it time and time again. Men who did not respect themselves, who did not vet the women they were with, who settled out of loneliness, who instead of deciding to put themselves at the forefront of their own lives, put other people at the front instead, those people end up miserable. I'm not telling you this shit so you can be, oh, he's an, he's an egotist just like these women he's talking about. But instead of the women I'm talking about who get away with being egotists, you try to be an egotistical male. And you get thrown in jail. <laughs> you, you, you act like an egotistical male and your entire life explodes. You're an egotistical female and you're just a modern woman. You're just a woman in modern society. 
men aren't allowed to have the inflated egos of women. We have to be stoic. We have to be tempered. We have to be able to control our emotions or else we get labeled as dangerous and we get labeled as creepy. and We get labeled as all kinds of shit that women are just allowed to shrub off because you can't call a woman a slut or a cunt or any of these other words these days. You call a woman any of those things and you're a misogynist, woman-hating, chauvinist, piece of crap, pig, fuckboy, incel. Like they'll, they'll throw every label at the book at you if you dare utter a single word against them. Because they're special. They, they were born with a vagina, so they should be treated with, with special, special kid gloves. Doesn't make any fucking sense. You march through the streets, you get all of your fucking voting rights, you have full equality for men, you get the vote without ever having to sign up for the fucking draft or selective service, you get all this special fucking privilege. But dudes, this, has, this shit has to fucking stop. Women want to have their fucking cake and eat it too. You cannot let them. You have to hold these bitches to account. You have to make them equal. If they want to be equal, make these motherfuckers equal. Do not settle for egregious, disgusting ass, non-submissive, domineering behavior from women. Do not waste your resources, time, energy, and effort on people who will not reciprocate that back to you. That is the basic boundary Every man should fucking have. If you notice that you're squeezing the lemon and juice is coming out of you, fucking walk away. If you're squeezing that lemon, the only thing coming out is sweat out of your fucking pores. You're not making lemonade, nigga. You're sweating. You're making a mess. That's what you're doing. So know your type, know what kind of woman you want, and don't compromise for that shit. You want a submissive trad girl? Don't fucking settle. You want big titty goth GF? Don't fucking settle. Because as a man, if you stay on your grind, your sexual marketplace value only increases with age. Leonardo DiCaprio's fucking bitches in their early 20s. Tom Brady's out here with another supermodel wife after his other supermodel wife left him. And I'm not saying we're all celebrities, but just keep in mind, regular fucking dudes who look like you and me just because they invest in them themselves, have women approaching them, have women that want to marry them. Even if women are not that important, just understanding that in your life, in your work, in your daily transactions, you're going to encounter these women who think that the world revolves around them just because they have a vagina. And you can't let them get away with shit. Understand your boundaries, understand self-respect. And keep doing what you're doing. Ultimately, that's that's all there is to it. At the end of the day, if women feel like a distraction, it's because they are. It's a, it's a biological imperative to find a mate and reproduce. And that's no, that's no small thing. It's very important. Nobody wants to die alone. Everybody wants to have a legacy. But at the end of the day, get a fucking passport. If it's really so much of a hassle and you really don't think that any woman around you is marriage material, if you feel like, all the opportunities passed you by. If you don't think it's going to happen here, then go somewhere else. Go where you're wanted. Go, go where women actually find you attractive and don't compromise. The, the last thing you want to do, bro, is settle. The last thing you want to do is settle just out of loneliness and overlook all this horrible shit that's wrong. That's how you're going to end up like all these boomer niggas who've been married and divorced three times. So thanks for sticking around. Thanks for watching. And yeah, bros. I'll, I'll see you around. Uh, again, let me know if you want to add anything to this list. If you have any suggestions for future topics you want me to cover, then let me know. But yeah, it's a lot of rage, a lot of, a lot of anger, a lot of pent up frustration. And I know for me, it's cathartic, but I just want you guys to walk away with something real, something honest, something that's uncensored, no punches pulled. I'm not fucking monetized. I don't give a shit. I don't give a fuck. YouTube is not paying me a single fucking dime for, for anything that I say or post. So I'm not going to pull the punches that these other grifting assholes in the manosphere are doing. Fuck these bitches. Don't listen to a single fucking thing that they say because they're all out to serve themselves. Unless they're willing to lower themselves to you. Unless they're willing to look you in the eyes and equal. Unless they're willing to put something else before them 
besides themselves, unless they're willing to de deflate their own egos, then don't give a shit what any of them say. You'll know when a woman actually cares about you. You'll know when a woman actually feels a certain way about you. You'll know when a woman's attracted to you. There won't be any fucking guesswork, no need to be in a friend zone, no need to keep texting and talking back and forth. You'll know when that shit happens. So just stay on your grind, do what you do. Someday a woman will come, even if she doesn't, doesn't fucking matter, bro. It is better to die alone than live with people who will never and do not ever respect you. So... Yep, I'm going to enjoy Hawaii. Hope you guys have a wonderful time. It's 15 minutes before the third hour mark, and I think I've done well. Somehow I've milked uh, an almost three-hour stream out of 11 talking points. But, yeah, I'm definitely going to go and enjoy my island paradise as I go and work my ass off like a fucking adult uh, in these fucking fields. Um yeah, it's going to suck. I'm actually not really looking forward to work tomorrow. Got to be fucking honest about that. It just, yeah. But I like my job. I enjoy it. Uh, but these niggas need better fucking internet. So, yeah. Peace out, guys. Happy holidays. Hope you had a great Thanksgiving. And I will hopefully see you next week.